Yay, us. Okay. Uh, everyone, welcome back. This is another yeah. week of Quiet Quitters. Quiet man. Quitters. Quiet Quitters, part two. So Quietly quitting. Quietly quitting. Quietly quitting just life, man. In an effort. Qu- quietly quitting in an effort for, for sanity, I believe. Oh, my God. That's really what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is the to whole. reclaim sanity. Yes. Yes. Um, it's almost a it's happening all over the world. It's it's uh, people are going on strike with their person. That's literally what they're doing. And, yeah. And people are going on strike. Yes. Both. Both. Right. Yeah. yeah. People are going on strike and in uh, general. But yeah, man, people nowadays, dude, have figured out that that th- when they get the pitch of like, like, you got to help out this company because it's going to better your future. People are like, nah, man. Yeah. It's, I've literally met yeah. baristas. People have met too many baristas happier than them. And that's an unfortunate thing yeah. that has happened in our society, that, that, that happiness now lies in many ways in minimum wage jobs where you can really just phone it in and your employer goes, yeah, man, whatever. Yeah. Just make sure the place doesn't burn to the ground. an hour, does that sound good to you? And you go, well, I'm just going to live here now, and all my bills will be paid here in New York City. $18 an hour in in Ohio, you're probably living life. I just, I remember when I first came here to New York, uh, my neighbor and I went to go get a coffee. Okay. And, um, like, we went to some coffee shop or whatever, and, and, you know, me being fresh from L.A. Yeah with my ideas yeah, yeah, yeah uh and um you know the interaction with the barista okay was like like the barista didn't give a fuck right got it and so i said something to my neighbor who grew up here yeah and my neighbor goes yo man what the fuck do you want for minimum wage you know like and yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. dude facts like yeah dude I saw a TikTok once where this woman said, you need to act your wage. People need to learn to act their wage. And that's so true, man. So many people yeah. and employers love that, man. When you go, oh, I'm going to go above and beyond for the company. Employers, employers yeah, of course. Because it's a there. steal. Yeah, 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 They get a deal on you. And I'm going to pay you minimum wage, but you're going to work like you're on salary with benefits. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you think they're going to help you out when it comes time to help you out, but they don't. They give that good job that they're supposed to help you out with. They give that to their their buddy's kid. Did that happen to you? No, but I grew up in a family business, so I kind of know. What? I grew up in a family company, yeah. Yeah, a truck parts company. Um, a what? A truck parts company. Truck parts. Yeah, I grew up in a family business. For like so, big rigs or what? Yeah, for big rigs. And so I just kind of know all the weird nepotism that goes into the business world and just all the, um, uh, all the, effectively. I had a guy, I had, I had an uncle, his name was Sal. Uh, he was the, he, he managed people at the company, but he really, he was just a guy who fucked with people's heads, dude. That really is. I mean, that was like his, and he identified with it. That was the craziest part. Too, oh, he, man. Yeah. he would say weird stuff. He'd be like, you, know, you got to put people in a box. You got to put people in a box and make sure that they <laughs> that they can't get out of the box, like so that you can always be like guilt tripping them constantly. He was teaching manipulation, <laughs> straight up, dude, like dark psychology. Oh, and he was just shit. like, man, this is just how the world works. This is like, how the world works. And it's you all about look at this guy people that have less than. Yeah, and you look yeah. at this guy and you just be like, man, I need to leave. And I did. I left there as soon as I kind of found my out. Um, yeah, it didn't feel right to you. It's kind of weird, man. When you grow up with privilege, Arrested Development. Development is, Arrested Development is a real thing. Um, that show Arrested Development, it's all about yeah. this family where the kids grow up with privilege and they don't know how to act any different. Arrested so, Development is also a great band. <sighs> one of, hey, one of the their first album is Everyday one of the People. Their first album is one of the greatest albums of all time, for sure, for sure, for sure. Dude, yeah. when they, they came out, it was uh, conscious hip hop. Yes, that was at, yeah, the first, it was a, what is it, three months, I, I'll look up the name of the album, because I want to actually make sure and say it right. So Arrested Development, let's see this, because it is one of the greatest Tennessee? albums of all time. Dude, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. What's the name? Three years, five months, two, and two days in the life <sighs> of, Arrested. In the, three years, five months, and two days in the life of dot, 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 but then Arrested Development. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Arrested Development is real, dude, and it happens to everyone. And I think, I think in a weird way, it's kind of interesting because uh, uh, being um, the band Arrested Development is obviously uh, African Americans, and so they're talking about the Arrested Development of African Americans within the United States culture and everything like that. Right. But it's so true of anyone who kind of comes from this sort of microcosm within any culture, basically. So if you if you grow up in in uh, in in, in uh, well entrenched within African American culture, right? And it's, that's like everything to yeah. you. You know what I mean? It's kind of the same thing as growing up in the mafia. Obviously, there's much more privilege in the mafia, but it's this idea of like, yo, this is your world. You know what I mean? Well, like, it's like your the world at large doesn't exist. This world is the real world. It's like your your buddy Sal. Or your cousin, uncle, yeah, uncle, uncle. Sal, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you need to put people in a box. Yeah, within that box is where arrested development happens. Oh, totally, totally, yeah, totally. Yeah. And that—that—that that, that was his game was to yeah. I will be the god over yeah. this world and stuff. And man, I—I I don't know, you know, uh, the guy might get his someday, dude. Because I'll tell you, man, he fucked with a lot of people and a lot of employees. This company has over two hundred employees. And dude, I—I I gotta tell you, there had to be tons of unkosher stuff this guy did with. And employees. your family still has this company. Yeah, they do. It's all. Do you, do you, it's we all, don't have to talk about it. It's all kind of falling apart right now. My dad and his brothers are suing each other and everything like that. Oh, so it's shit. all it's falling apart. I got out years ago. It was such a toxic. What was your gig there? Man. I was a sales guy there, oh, and dude, uh, I bet you were a great salesman. I was, and then, but once again, I had this uncle who just fucked with me left and right, dude. And because so you were of that, angry. I got angry uh, towards the end because he would fuck with me all the time. And uh, and there was a point, man, where I was uh, working and going to school at the same time. And he would just fuck me about that start time. Uh, I'd show up at like 830 and stuff. You oh, know and I mean? you were doing it. And then uh, and then I but then I would work till like 10 o'clock at night. Right. At, but that didn't this, matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. And then so at this school. Right. And then so he would always bust my balls about that. And yeah. then and then uh, he used that to take the education away from me because yeah. I was the one who wanted the education in truck parts. And he took the education away from me. He took. He took me out of school because I wasn't showing up every day at eight uh, o'clock. And then after that, I copped a serious fucking attitude and I would just show up at like 10 o'clock. You yeah, know what I mean? Because I'm like, dude. yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah. you, man. Because in that, I was trying to blaze a way out of entertainment within my family. But because there was so much flack being given to me, I copped an attitude and I'm just like, I need to fucking leave. Did you feel and, like you could do that though? Because like you had the juice because your dad. Oh, your, of course. That's all part of the arrest yeah, and development, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is this whole yeah. idea of, and then you finally break free. And then, of course, you yeah. know that's why that exists and everything like that. And you know you're kind of acting out because you're upset and stuff yeah. like that. And then you sort of, uh, and you know that. And you know you're like, there is I'm a level, paving my way out of here, basically. Yeah, live, you know what I, mean? I mean, there's a generational level, but like working in restaurants, there is when you work with somebody that's connected to the owner yeah. in, a, in a family way, Yeah, that person is a little bit more they don't have that same level of fear of getting fired oh yeah totally, you know what i totally. mean you don't you don't you don't you don't and, you are, you don't and when you do have that fear of getting fired you're definitely jealous well there is so many added elements so this yeah. is something personal about me i kind of talk about it a lot um i had an aunt who falsely accused me of molesting her son when i was a kid swear to god uh okay. the cops got involved um i took a professional lie detector test in order to establish my innocence and all that um and uh uh D D Department of Children and Family came and took my brothers and sisters out of class, like interview them and shit like that, like all these different things, shit. right? How old were you? I was thirteen, and uh, my aunt did this. Um, uh, from what it's kind of the idea was what a lot what my aunt uh, Selena told me is that she did it to extort money from my grandmother. Um, like a week before she did it, she had asked my grandmother for eighty grand, and my grandmother said no, and then so. She went and confronted my grandmother with this with this falsehood, with this false accusation. And my grandmother, she didn't want, she goes, oh, goes to my grandmother, don't tell anyone. My, thank God my grandmother told my dad, you know, because then my dad went and asked me. And I said, no, of course I didn't do that. And uh, then investigation got opened. And here's the thing is they notified her that her son would be expected to be interviewed by a uh, a a a, psycholo a child psychologist right uh so her son would be expected to be interviewed by a child psychologist and she refused to have that happen and uh because she was lying you know what i mean so it would come back that her son was being mm. coached and stuff and so she refused that and she withdrew the accusation 
And then ready for this, it ended as soon as it started. So the police were involved in everything. And then the second she withdrew the accusation, just all ended. Yeah. And everyone turned to me and they're like, let's just forget about all oh. this. And, <laughs> right? Because yeah. there's like so much money yeah. at stake and everything yeah. like that. So they're like, let's just forget about yeah. all this. And oh. dude, it fucked me up for life. Well, dude. 13 years old, dude. Fucked You're me just, up for life. You just dude. want to go to the movies. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I had this. Eat fucking candy. Yeah. And then I had this uncle who, like I said, was, was just this guy who was playing mind games with me to kind of have this dominance over me and stuff. He used to, he was this coach of this basketball team called St. Martha's uh, basketball that he signed me up for and he would take me to this he basketball. He was the varsity coach? No, it was in middle school. Uh, oh, it was in middle school yeah. and, and he used to take me there and the kids treat me like absolute dog shit and they would do it did right in front ball? of them. Did you play ball? I, I not, did, but not they, I, would never, I, would never, uh, I would never play. I would sit on the bench the entire oh, time. yeah. Yeah, and uh, kids would pull down my pants in front of other kids. Like Oof. not like not like all the way to my dick, just, you know, like, you know, to my underwear and yeah, stuff like bullied. that. I was just bullied severely. And I had this uncle who just sat back and watched it and stuff because it was this idea that he was just this type of guy that was like as crazy as it sounds, man. He was like starting young with like managing a person that he was then going to manage for forever. Yeah, basically. he lived by like, an old code. I don't know what it I was, think it man. Like it was like well, some people just live by these old codes of control because yeah. it was put upon them. Yeah, so it's and like it, they're, it's almost like they can't. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like my my uh, uh, my my. I'm gonna let my nephew get bullied so that he becomes like yeah. um uh uh I, I so I can I can be dominant over him so that he becomes kind of submissive to uh to me and um and it almost worked, man. Until I got this is the truth. It almost worked until I got into USC graduate film school. And I went out to California, and then all of a sudden, I really started thinking about my past and started thinking about wow. everything that I went through and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then gnarly. I meet other people that are really nice to me out there, and I'm like, things that I went through are are, not, are, yeah. not, are I already knew they weren't normal, but I Wasn't began cool. to realize yeah, yeah. like it's like it's like way beyond like people who that I thought mm. like my uncle like my uncle Sal mm. that I thought were kind of innocuous characters in my life, even though I didn't I didn't think they were innocuous, but it was like. It really all came into focus, basically, yeah. when I went out there, dude. And I, uh, and so, and here's the other thing, man, is especially when I started doing stand up, because that's like therapy on steroids. And you start talking through your problems in joke format and everything like that, dude. And so, uh, yeah, man, this is what I'm talking about. Even though I grew up in privilege uh, with this rich family, like arrested development is real, dude. There's, 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 yeah, there's, I mean, there's many emotional develop. I mean, there's many developments, right? You know. Well, also too, within these rich families, there's always that one person who does, who who the family does assign to hold the piss bucket and tries to convince that person that they're not the person holding the piss bucket, and that was me. And Whoa. so that's like a very real thing, right? right? I was the the I was the scapegoat of the family we're, and stuff. We're not talking about love here, are we? <laughs> no, no, no. And and I yeah. think and I think what happened was is because my aunt falsely accused me and they knew that I would be carrying this false accusation throughout my life, I became psychologically in their mind the, the lesser than one, the one that was already walking with this invisible handicap basically. Interesting. So the one that they could kind of use yeah. and scapegoat. He's and, used to the trauma. Yeah, sort of. As crazy <laughs> yeah, as it sounds, yeah. like we can beat him up Oof. and stuff and 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 mold that him sucks. because uh we're not gonna be as bad Oof. as Teresa who falsely accused him. Uh, Isn't that wild dude, dude? I'm so sorry. Yeah it's and, awful. Oh it's terrible man. And it caused such terrible things. It caused my um, they would, uh, members of my family would try to convince, I'm, this is like full disclosure, members of my family would try to convince um, my dad constantly that I was just like this bum. You know what I mean? That, that I, that, uh, and, 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 and they would even probably say things like, we know there's a lot of psychological trauma that went into it, but like, he's like not right in the head. Look at what he does with yeah. the stand up and everything like that. Yeah. And because of that, this is, they would justify their abuse. <laughs> yeah. And because of that, this is crazy. They convinced my dad to, um, give all rights over my inheritance and posterity to my brother. So that's the craziest thing now too. And my, and, and, and now I'm basically estranged from my family. Cause uh -huh. I'm like, I'm like, yo, my brother decides whether or not I get an inheritance later wow. on in life. And he straight up called me and told me that I'm not going to give you an inheritance. My brother did. Um, the inheritance is meant for the grandkids. And if you want anyone to get anything, you should get married and have kids. Wow. And so, um, and he has kids. So what, what is he doing? Yeah. He's stealing for his children, basically. He's stealing my inheritance and stuff, dude. Um, families are fucked, dude. And especially. But you do have, the bright side of that is. I made it out. 
you're fr- you're free. I made it out. Yeah, dude. I literally and and that you was the don't thing. Don't have that, to play games. And I was the only one that made it out. Even my brother, who's a lawyer, he's my dad's lawyer, but he doesn't have a real job. He just works for the family. He just works. He just works for the family. Inherit. He literally like manages the inheritance, whatever the fuck that is, right? You ever see that um, movie? And I'm out here giving tours in New York City yeah. for a living. You know what I mean? Every yeah, single but you're day, not, like, you don't have to play the game. I don't you ever see that movie game. Greed? With Michael J. Fox. I have, actually. And Phil Herman. Hey, ready for this? You're the Michael J. Fox character. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> the I'm bowler. The, yeah, yeah. The guy who shows up and 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 is always on the outskirts, sometimes gets pulled, pulled back in. Yeah. And is kind of out of it, because in a weird way, here's the thing. I've already prepared myself for this idea that I lose my entire inheritance, um, but I gain my freedom. And and other people yeah. and other people have to sell their souls in order to get the thing. And that's probably why they justify it too. Hey, I had to sell my soul. In order to get this money, Joe didn't, so that's his prize. And as crazy as it sounds, they would probably never frame it in that term. Well, that, in those terms, I mean, but you like, probably wouldn't until you, unless you're all alone by yourself thinking about for instance, how you for, suck. But yeah, I yeah. think it's like, I mean, I, it's all fear, right? Yeah, you know, like it's a, it's scary to go make it on your own, and yeah. if you have a safety net, especially in you know. And if you have a safety net, yeah, you'll you'll probably put up with stuff to ensure that safety net. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. You're 100 percent right. And that that's really what it is. I look at my brother. My brother has five kids, and he doesn't have a job. Yeah. And his job is managing the money for the family. So yeah. he needs to create an identity off of my dependence, and it's very uncomfortable for him that I don't need money. It would be way more comfortable for him if I was a bum begging for money. Because right. then he could be like, well, what's this money right. going towards? How much weed are you smoking, Well, good for Joe? you. And all that. You know, I ate all that. But now I just said, hey, man, I don't want to live my life with my brother as my parent. And so I'm just going to go off on my own and, and be afraid. And it's kind of ugly for my family because what they wanted was for me to be that dependent person. I know that sounds so weird and crazy, right? No, it sounds right? totally normal. Yeah. It, but sounds, they, it sounds like a... They really wanted me to be that dependent like person. It's status so quo. It's very difficult for them that I have the wherewithal to walk away. And here's the here's the thing is I'm not even rich, man. I struggle from time to time, but it just gets easier to struggle over time. You, you, you are rich like, in other things than money. I guess so. I guess there is, there is truth to that. You oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like you don't have to play those games. Yeah. You may not have a fucking Lambo or whatever. It's interesting but that you who, say that. You know what I mean? I grew up in this family that they, they played a lot of, they gambled a lot. My dad gambled a lot. Oh, they, um, did, they actually played games. They gamed gaming. Yeah. And so, and so a big thing was poker. They used to always play poker. And, and I was never like, we always talked about on the last podcast, like I'm not, I, I, I don't, I play to play. I don't play to win. You know yeah. what I mean? That Can I give you my real quick take yeah, on go ahead, go ahead. poker? Yeah, yeah. It's a cool game. Yeah. I don't like the people that are around the table. Fair enough, fair enough, right? That's how I think of poker. So you'll kind of relate to what I'm about to say, which is I um, I kind of said to myself one day, so here's what happened is I left, and I ended up working um, at, at this, uh, I left my family's business, and when I left, this is a true story, right? My father said to me, he goes, I'm going to give you nothing, nothing at all um, <sighs> except uh, except the car that you have that I bought for you, okay? And he says, if you need money, <sighs> you can drive Uber with that car. Jesus, and I said, man. okay, bet so i started driving uber with the car literally now hey ready for this dude i got i left the company my brother left the company the same time as me this is where it gets fucked my dad goes to me um uh because me and my brother both were having fights with 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 uh with the the company at, at large my brother uncle sal uh yes yeah yeah yes for sure for sure we're both having fights with the company at large in that regard and then so what happens is I I get I get I leave the company and Steve. We we both effectively get thrown out of this company. Me and my brother. And when I get thrown out, my dad says, you know, you're you you need to learn. Blah blah. I'm I'm giving you nothing except the car that that you have. You have a car. You literally have a car. Go and live with friends. Do whatever. Drive Uber. Like like do you? Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Start from the bottom. Struggle. So I go bet. So I did. Now here's the thing. I didn't know, man. My brother also got thrown out of the company. Um. Same thing didn't happen to my brother. My brother, uh, uh, you can look this up. He got given two hundred thousand dollars to start this company called Mount Vita, which is this website that's it's a tourism website. The thing fucking failed. Okay. Now here's what happens. I don't know anything about this. I start applying for jobs. I end up getting a job as the marketing director of the official bike rental company of Central Park. So I now work in tourism. Okay. 
I get a call from my brother. Oh my God, you're an executive in New York and tourism. This is amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Just so you know, I started this company and, and it can be our company. Like it's Mount Vita. And I'm like, wait, what? What's this? Yeah. Our, our father funded this, this website. It's a travel website. It's like an Expedia, blah, blah, blah. I need someone to do the marketing for it. And you're doing marketing. This is perfect. Blah, blah. I'm asking about this company. Lord, I, I come to find out, um, uh, lo and behold, um, my father gave him effectively 200 grand to start this company and gave me um, nothing. Just right. a car to drive, dude. Isn't that fucking crazy, dude? And it became this black eye, yeah, that man. That sucks, man. It became this black eye and stuff. And, uh, and I, yeah, that, well, that. I, and on my father and stuff, because it all came to light and everything. And, and, and it was so serendipitous that I got a job in tourism because they didn't want me to know about this. And then all of a sudden they're trying to gaslight me. You know what, you know what I'm saying? And, and tell me, oh, like, you yeah. know, like, like you were supposed to be a part of this all along, blah, blah, blah. Because now I just literally fell into this job that mm. helps it out, dude. Fucking and life, so I dude. Said, and so I said, nah, man, I'm good. I'm going to do my own thing. So I started walking to our company. Now I start this walking tour company with nothing and it ends up becoming successful. My brother starts a tourism website with 200 grand. It fails. And so now it's even uglier. And by this time, he already has my inheritance and everything. My brother, he already got things so signed over to him. It's what's interesting. I mean, isn't that wild? This whole story? no, but I, I'm f beyond wild. Yeah, yeah, that's beyond wild. Yeah, yeah, it happens every day in America. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why it's, it's like, like yeah. Thing, yeah. But like, and good for you, you know, for taking, you know, uh, the tragedy and 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 using it to build up your own strength well there's actually something um um because that's not easy to do dude you want to hear an even weirder psychological thing this comes from the economist because i really like you know i, I read that's the economist your a lot. that's your magazine that's my bible are we sponsored by the economist we are not but oh. we should be um okay. uh but here's the thing there's a new idea in psychology it's a brand new idea in psychology brand new idea and it's called um it's called desirable difficulties and ready for how the idea came about it came about through Roald Dahl novels. So Roald Dahl novels, Roald, you know Roald Dahl novels? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlie and Chocolate Factory, yeah. um, James and Giant Peach. Uh, oh, I didn't know Matilda. he was. All I knew was Char Chocolate yeah, Factory. Yeah, James and Giant Peach, Matilda, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, the BFG. There, there's all these different books. Now, the stories, Roald Dahl novels, the stories always go like this. Here's the basic story of Roald Dahl novel. It's a... Uh, it's usually a child, and this child is abused or neglected in some sort of way, either an orphan or has a parents that don't care about the child, yeah. whatever. And the child ends up developing these talents right. because of the difficulties that they're right. going through. So then everyone around the child that was trying to push the child down ends up becoming jealous of the child yeah. because the yeah. child has these gifts that came through yeah. the hardship. And so it's a phenomenon called desirable difficulties. Yeah. It's kind well, of... It, I mean, it's an interesting... Because, like, yeah. had this shit not happened to you... I wouldn't be able to speak in public as well as I do. I wouldn't be able to just... You wouldn't be free. Casually be having this conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean, dude? Ten years ago, this would have been a nightmare yeah. for me. I wouldn't have been able to get through drinking coffee, too, it's on the great. It. it sounds it's like, like it's the great trade-off. The great trade-off is... Uh, <sighs> If you want to grow, you got to have no golden parachute, you know? If you want to be safe, you have the golden parachute, but you're not going to grow. It's funny, dude. I saw the movie The Holy Mountain this past week, and Alejandro Jodorowsky's The Holy Mountain, dude, and it's all about um, this sort of esoteric idea and all these different secret societies and even in religion in general, this thing called The Holy Mountain, where it's people. Um, the, story, the story goes like this, man. Uh, the sim it, it, everyone talks about this from Ayn Rand to everybody, and the story goes like this: It's a Prometheus story. It's a uh, a man climbs the, uh, the mountain of the gods in order to get the fire of the gods to bring it down to men. But when that man gets to the top of the mountain and finally gets the fire of the gods, what that guy realizes is, oh, I can't bring this down to men. I can only invite other men up to come up the mountain. And that's sort of the idea, yeah. basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we feel that with stand up, right? Like you like we were talking about before, how like years later, you know what I mean? You're doing yeah. it now and you look back at that that young guy who was yeah. doing stand up with these shitty premises and whatnot. And you're uh, like, why aren't I getting laughs and yeah. stuff? And then you realize you can't explain the mountain to that guy. Now that you're uh, higher up on the mountain, yeah. you go, nah, man, you literally have to climb the mountain. I can't tell you about the fire of the gods. You literally yeah. have to climb the mountain to get closer and closer and closer to the fire of the gods. Yeah. I think, and the stand-up thing is like, it's more, that's a time thing because 
you know, when you when I first started doing it, you know, you I, you have this great bit, you yeah, know, that yeah. you fucking came up with five minutes before your mic, you know, because yeah, yeah. you've been fucking around all day, and uh, it doesn't. Nobody likes it, right? And you're like, fuck these people, you know? Yeah. But when you do <laughs> that happens for years, then you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's just part of it, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. just, uh, you know, nobody. And you're like this. You're like, oh, nobody likes that. Move you, on. You lose yourself. You definitely lose yourself. Yeah. You, and, well, you you quiet your ego. Yeah. So much so, man. And 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 it which keep, is night, which is another freedom. It is, man. And all these things, I wouldn't... It's so weird, man. Everything that you're saying is true. There's In a lot of ways, I wouldn't trade a lot of this stuff for the world, but... To our fans out there, everything I'm saying is true. Uh, <laughs> probably, to some degree. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, that, you know, it's it's definitely a process when you go through these traumas. Uh-huh. It's a process of losing your ego because it gets beaten out of you so badly. But the thing that hurts, dude, and and for instance, man, my mother was a part of signing away my posterity yeah, yeah, to yeah. my brother. She yeah. actually had to put her signature down. Oof. And she even wrote me a letter saying I knew it was wrong as I was doing it, Ugh. but I did it anyway because right. I was being told to do it. Right. And so I don't talk to my own mother, man. Huh. And it's so tough, man, to be... To say, hey man, in order to keep my dignity, in order to stay on top uh, of the holy mountain, I have to say goodbye to my mother. It's fucked, dude. Like, and uh, uh, but that happens, man. Um, well, I think too, it's like you know, I, I hear you, and I don't know what I don't know at all what it's like. Yeah, but you, you know, I mean, fuck. I mean, it's just awful. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Right? It's terrible. Like somebody, it's, betrayal like it, is a terrible thing. But it it's really also a, a, the story of what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, right? <sighs> yeah, I which guess. is fucking. Yeah, like it was it worth it? But, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I am stronger now. But you know, yeah, 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 yes and no, man. You know, it's it, crazy. It, it, um, um, At what cost? N- and not just that. Not just that. I will say this to you. When I was. Uh, it's weird thing happened. When I was in college, I uh, I was uh, I was going through a lot because of this. No one was helping me at all, and I had this sort of mental breakdown. And I and I just stopped doing my schoolwork in college, and I and I failed the semester. I just failed. And school was like, "Do you need a break?" And I'm like, "I think I do." And I went to a Catholic school, and I donated a year of my life to the Catholic Church, and it was really one of the best things that ever happened. To me. How old were you? I was Twenty years old. Yeah. You donated a year of your life to the Catholic Church, like you picked a church. No, no, no. It's like uh, the way Mormons donate a year of their life to Mormonism. I did the exact same thing, but within Catholicism. Swear to God. So you were like a el- elder Camarota. I guess, yeah. Ha, but like yeah. not. So they have these programs where they just send you places. It's free labor, you know what I mean, right? And they sometimes <laughs> they send you to work with poor people. In my case, I got uh, I was sent to this school called Dublin Oak Academy in in uh, Ireland, which was oh, that's uh, cool. it was high school kids. Um, uh, effectively high school kids and uh, they were uh, the children of billionaires uh, all dudes it was an all boys school they were oh, children it was a of boarding school yeah, it was a boarding school oh yeah. got it and so and anyway you were 20 I was 20 and uh, I was just I, I taught religion there I was uh, one of the prefects of the school basically you know what I mean which is uh, you kind of just make sure it doesn't burn to the ground how did you, you get know? hooked up with this through my Catholic college, Franciscan University. Yeah, they had all these programs there. And oh, stuff you were in a joined. Catholic college. Okay, I was yeah, in a Catholic yeah. college. I was thinking yeah, the SC. Yeah, yeah, film yeah. school came later. Film school came okay, later. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah. So, so you yeah, were... yeah. I, by, by the time I went to film school, I was already on my way out of Catholicism, and then that fully hit the, you know, yeah. down that. But, but either way, here's an interesting thing that happened. They, um, when I got there, they noticed that I was a really good reader, that I like to read and stuff. And they, so they said, uh, hey, they said, that'll be your thing while you're here. Just read. They were like, just read. They're like, read a book a week. Tell us what book you read every week. And I was really thankful for that, man, because it really, um, these books gave me new paradigms and they gave me answers, right? And it started this addiction with reading, basically, for me, and this addiction with audiobooks and everything like that. And I will be honest with you, I've gone through a lot of trauma. The trauma that I went through, I've seen people in the street, like junkies in the street, and, and, and they went through trauma and that trauma broke them. 
And it didn't break me. And the reason it didn't break me is because I did have this education. I will say the one good thing about coming from a world of privilege is I got a good education paid for me. Mm, and so I knew yeah. how to read. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And reading different paradigms, and giving me different... hundred percent makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. And so when somebody, when bad things were happening to me, were happening to me I could read books yeah. about how to cope yeah. with these traumas. And because of that, I was able to create all these paradigms and I was able to keep myself sane. And I will say that is the one thing, man, that can was sane. So was, was knowledge or like, obtaining knowledge that was your like support group like did you have like people yeah. that were there to support you or i once i once read a book uh by i think it's robert green's the guy's name he wrote 48 laws of power he also wrote this book called mastery and he talks about how in order to become a master you have to get mentors and people can get individual mentors uh like just a mentor that is your mentor who guides you and uh, Robert Greene said, though, there's another way, which is you can have mentors that are like uh, 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 dead or, or not because exi- they gave their mentorship through books. Through books. Okay. But it takes so a your lot mentors, more. OK. It takes a lot more self-discipline. That's what he said in the thing. Right. Whereas the other one is if you have just a live mentor, yeah. that person's always going to be on top of you. Yeah. That doesn't take as much self-discipline. But if you're willing to. Easier to talk shit to a dead guy mentor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're willing to to discipline yourself, then you can just have your mentors be the brilliant people of history. So you that had way. that discipline. I had that discipline because of this school. And I still have that discipline. And uh, I'm still just addicted to it because of that year. I'm addicted to garnering all this knowledge through The Economist. That's why I love The Economist. Do you feel, a dr- you feel a drive or do you feel like pleasure from learning? Like what is, I, it, what is it that gets you... I uh, I definitely feel that. I definitely feel like it's an ego boost, right? It's it's this way oh, of okay. like so I, I did lose my 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 uh my princedom in the sense of leaving my family and everything like that. Oh, princedom, yeah, yeah, and yeah. leaving this um this idea of wealth, right? And so after that, I just started reading fucking constantly. Yeah. And so that gave me a new currency. And it was a currency yeah. of being able to, uh, uh, you know, parrot wise thoughts. Yeah. But, you know, it was at least a currency that I held, basically. And so I still have that addiction, man, because that's what fuels the comedy and everything like that. Yeah. You know it's I mean? also like, like the goodwill like, hunting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sort of thing. You know, I mean, I don't think I'm. I'm uh, that level of genius, but uh, <laughs> I did go to USC Graduate Film School. Hey, um, there's, there's that. There's check that. the credentials. But, but yeah, no, I bet if I applied for certain things, you know, I could probably go yeah. on some amazing adventures, and I have. But it kind of depends on what you want out of life, man. Sometimes, let me, let, yeah. Let me hit you with this one. Yeah, go on. How did you know that you were intelligent? Um, how did I know that? When did you find that out? Or did, you know, when did you discover that you were, when did you were like, you know what, I'm actually intelligent. I'm not a fucking moron. So I applied to USC Graduate Film School and ended up getting in. No one could believe it, actually, right? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, for whatever reason, they couldn't believe it. And then I get there, and this is actual a true story. I had this mentor named Brenda Goodman. Uh, uh, great woman, very yeah. liberal. Living. Living, yeah, Brenda. Yeah. Brenda's the best. Um, and you understand, I came from this conservative Catholic background, and I get to USC, and Brenda is this agnostic, atheist, lesbian. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know she's, and she becomes my mentor, right? Yeah. But I, I think I was always, and this is a crazy thing, even throughout my whole life, even through all my right wing Catholicism and everything, I was still very, uh, uh, very open minded. Mm-hmm. I didn't judge people. I was just like, I don't know. You know, what I mean, sometimes I did, but I kind of, I was, I always felt weird you were about open. It. Oh, I think that's the best yeah. word. Yeah. Open. You were open. I felt weird about yeah. judging people, even when I did. I think that's, I felt like I was have your villain. beliefs, but be yeah. open yeah. is yeah. really the be- best place to be. And so uh, there were some things I didn't understand because of Catholicism just had me in this in this mental box. You know what I mean? But I was always like, well, other people seem to be nice. That was another thing is that Catholics weren't nice to me, right? <laughs> so I'm like meeting all these other people that are like atheists <laughs> and stuff, and they're nice to me, and I'm like, well, I'm like you know, it's like, you know, so other people abuse the living shit out of me, and these people are nice. So you know, you know, it's uh, there is yeah. So anyway, this woman, Brenda, yeah, man, she was my mentor at USC, and she did give me a lot of these weird privileges at USC and stuff. So it was kind of yeah. like a, 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 the thing that my brother went through with my dad and my mom. She, I was now going through it with this woman, Brenda. You know what I mean? It was giving me all these privileges and stuff. Well, or maybe she was giving you the love that you didn't get from maybe. your parents. Yeah, maybe. Maybe she's, you know. Maybe she saw that. Or maybe she just literally saw that I was intelligent, like I'm about to say. She said, uh, yeah. one time we're sitting there in her office, and she goes, Joe, she goes, can I tell you something about you? And she goes, um... You 
can explain how you think better than any human being I've ever met in my entire life. You can literally say, I believe this, I think this way, and then you can break down exactly how you got there better than any human being I've ever met. She goes, honestly and truly, no one I've ever met knows how they think better than you. But here's the thing, Joe, you know how you think, but you don't know how you feel. You have oh, yeah, no yeah. idea how you <laughs> feel about anything. <laughs> wow. You're literally just a guy yeah, who you're... has, you go, this is my point, and you you're can like break a... down everything, but at no point do you ever yeah. say, how do I feel? You're like a calculator. Yeah, yeah. how do you're I like, feel? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that set me on a journey to question everything, because well, I'm like, well, how do I How do I feel, feel? about it? Yeah, yeah. How, how are these people around me treating me? How do I feel about how they're treating me? How does that affect? the decisions that I It's funny because you think you would hit, you think that would be covered immediately. Yeah, but, know, it, but it's not, in childhood. man. Yeah, but you, when you're this Manchurian yeah. candidate who's yeah. just being molded by people, uh, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. You just know what you think. You don't know how you feel. I know you're scared, but just learn... Learn this math. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never go, I feel this way. Yeah. These are the feelings that I'm having. These are the struggles that I'm going through. And I started to do that because of Brenda, man. And it, and it changed my whole life, man. And it really set me down the road of, of, of doing stand-up and confronting that. Mm. I mean, like, you know, how do I feel? And I do, I think a lot of people in stand-up, man, stand-up is very liberal, but people are liberal for no reasons, dude. They never challenge anything because they never ask themselves, how do I feel? How do I feel about certain things? They just go, nah, man, mm. I'm supposed to think this way. I'm supposed to feel this way. And, um, oh, to give a correction, you saw me do a set the other night, and I was really harsh on Biden about the razor wire. Uh, at the border, turns out not Biden whatsoever. That's the Republicans. That's the uh, state of Texas uh, doing uh, that. Shit. So, yeah, yeah. Well, so your, yeah, correct. Your premise is shot to hell. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that's the important thing, man. Yeah. Is to go after this type yeah. of stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, and be able to say, hey, like, uh, yeah, right. Fucking kid in a cardboard box. Just, just to be able. To, oh yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. Uh, that 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 TikTok I, I I told you about how like just a kid in a cardboard box being pushed underneath uh, with a cardboard box covering being pushed underneath razor wire, dude. And here's the thing, man. I will say this, man. Unless Trump condemns that move by the Republican governor of Texas, unless Trump condemns that move of the razor wire, I I can't in good conscience vote for. I can't in good conscience vote for any party that would that would do that and then not condemn that. So I believe where we left off was uh, you had no knowledge of how you felt. Yeah, I guess you like... You only had knowledge of how you think. Yes, yeah. This What a, what was this woman's name? Brenda, Brenda Goodman. What, an, what a fucking angel. Yeah, right? To kind what of confront... What an angel to Seriously. be like, hey, buddy. Heads up. Uh, yeah. like, no one's ever told you this before. <laughs> I know no one's ever told this before because I know people have have yeah. literally yeah. Uh, built you this way. Uh, and I'm going to be the first person to come along and tell you, hey, if you just behave, if you just literally frame the world differently in your mind, everything will be different. I for love you. Brenda. Yeah. Right. And, and she started me on this journey, man, to ask. And it broke down everything. And, and it gave me the courage to even walk away from my own mother to be like to be like, hey, like. Is would a person who loved me do this to me? Mm. Even if they're scared, w wouldn't they make a stand? You know what mm. I mean? And so you have these things where you go, "How do I feel about this?" Um, and uh, and yeah, it caused me, man. There was um, there's a lot of pain, man, because because for a while it was kind of funny. When I was a kid, I uh, I used to uh, my dad had this thing called the money box, right? And it was in his top drawer. It had all this money in it, right? Um, it was just like, you know, petty cash, you know what I mean, for the family in case of emergencies. And I used to take that money all the time. I used to buy booze in high school for all these people because I, I was trying to have friends. I was very – oh, also – I had, oh, I, you had access to the money box. So I had, I had, I had this, I had this thing called gynecomastia, where I grew large woman-like breasts when I went through puberty and stuff. So I yes. kind of looked freakish and everything. You yes. know about this. I've talked about I, this, yes, right? Yeah, I, yeah. So I had trouble making friends. I had no friends in high school. Plus the trauma of my aunt falsely accusing me. Like it was just like a very weird time. How old are you at this point? Like so 15? I'm in high school. Yeah, I'm in high school. You know, okay. 15, 16, everything cool. like that. I made friends with these people in my hometown who were also wealthy. They were kind of like this wealthy inner circle. It's kind of like uh, my dad's parent or my dad's. Uh, uh, my dad was friends with their parents, yeah. and so I was friends with their kids, basically, right, right. sort of deal. Yeah. But anyway, they just used me for my money, right? And because uh, I had access to this oh, you money were ATM. Yeah, yeah, I was an ATM. And then when I kind of took that away, or when that went away, they fell by the wayside. 
Yeah. And I noticed that happen with people. So I was like, okay, I can't. How did you take it away from them? I guess it, I just wasn't around with it anymore, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So they didn't bother to come back and kind of, how are you doing, Joe? You know what I mean? Because they knew you didn't have the money anymore. No, it was just because they knew my mindset changed too, that I wasn't spending my money on them. As oh, much. so you, you know what I mean? Was, so, no, okay. So you, so, you know, I, you I went stopped. off. To, I went out to college. I went to uh, film school. You know what I mean? I kind of started reallocating any access to money that I had towards making movies, stuff like that. So you began to set up boundaries for these. Yeah. And they began to push me away. And so I remember, I remember for instance, when, uh, uh, when one of them got married, they invited me to the bachelor party, but I, but this was when I was in film school. I wasn't allowed to stay in the suite with them. You know what I mean? I had to get my own room and stuff like that. And these are people that I was like, like is that you? Flash flood. Sorry, dude. I don't know what I'm saying. It's just a test. Oh, just a test, guys. So I uh, started to uh, uh, put all these boundaries with all these folks, right? And, uh, and yeah, effectively, that kind of changed the game. And then something weird happened. I was like, you know what? I need to take any access to any money that I have, and I need to invest it in myself. I can't invest it. And that's where stand-up started coming in and stuff like that. I'm like, I can't invest it into other people anymore. I can't do that. I have to invest it into myself. You no longer wanted to purchase friends. I no longer want yeah, to purchase yeah, friends, yeah. right? And then I started doing uh, kind of, uh, and I already done this beforehand, but I also, I was like, okay, I'll do acts of service instead. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll use my network to help people. And I would do that with my brother. What, can't, what spawned that idea? I think subconsciously it was just like, instead of buying friends, I'll just kind of try to like be somebody useful. Basically. Okay. You know what I mean? In that way. And, and stuff. you and came so, to that. I think I came to it subconsciously. Um, I, I uh, just yeah, made sense. Yeah. It just kind of made sense to try Got to be it. useful. Um, especially at film school, I think being a part of teams now. Uh, like yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's that, there's that aspect yeah. too. You know what I mean? We're like, we're like, that's what people value. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was that right. And so here's what happened, man. Oddly enough, dude, most people that I did acts of service for um, within that family unit that I came from that betrayed me, they didn't care. It wasn't film school people did, though. They were reciprocating these acts of service. And it was the first time that, that ever happened. And then truth be told, um, this woman named Mira um, and her husband, Paul, um, Paul was one of my best friends in, in graduate school. And he married Mira. And, and I was a part of them meeting and everything. And when it when she finally had enough money to do her own feature, like I told you about, uh, she brought me in as a producer. And so Got it's it. weird that that and she's she's a Hindu yeah. woman. She's a Hindu woman. That's the other thing too. It wasn't even the cat. The Catholics fucked me over. Right. Boom, 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 boom. The person who came back and turned the key for me in a big way was a Hindu woman. And I'll yeah, never. Yeah, well, it's never the it's never the label you give them. It's who they are and. It's, as a person, well, you know what right? it is, man. You it's that I mean? old Catholic story where it's that old Christian every story. Every story from every every it's an old group Christian story where has where, a psycho. Well, it's that old Christian story where uh, 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 Jesus healed ten lepers, and uh, nine of them didn't come back, and one did come back, and it was a Samaritan who wasn't a Jew. And so it's like it's kind of that's true, man. You know, what I mean, the people that are going to come back and thank you that you help a lot of times won't be the people from your tribe. Yeah. The, you know uh, I mean? It's the unconditional, like, I don't know help. what it is. It's, There's it, no condition. I'm not helping you because I'm this. I'm yeah. helping you because you need help. Every Catholic used me, used me, used me, used me, used me. It was a Hindu woman who came back and said, thank you. It's that's, beautiful. That's just life, man. That that happened to me. That happened to me. Beautiful. Every Catholic said, and 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 her, and her husband Paul, I think, is also Hindu slash agnostic and stuff. And 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 uh, and but that's what I mean. That's who came back to help me. That's who came back to give me love. Yeah, it, 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 the Catholics. The Catholics. Uh, uh, I think it's spit on me. It's why cool. Well, you know, yeah. I think it's uh, why it's cool for people to get up, like if they have the opportunity to get out of where they're from. Yeah, because you're you're like, oh my god, this there's this whole other world. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's doing all the shit my little community does so much weird politics man there really is um within well, that's family su dynamics survival and right and it's i guess a, so a, yeah it's a form of survival well you know what though i'll tell you this man one day um um my favorite my hero is a woman named ann Rowe. ann Rowe. ann Rowe. she um she writes the obituary for the economist and i attended an online seminar shout out to her. if you guys want to support us ann Rowe. yeah, yeah right uh, <laughs> the economist <laughs> 
Anyway, this woman, Ann Rowe, man, she, uh, I contacted her once. I uh, attended this online seminar, and she gave her email because she's like, hey, you know, I love hearing from fans because she doesn't sign that she writes the obituary for The Economist. You have to research who writes the obituary for The Economist, and this woman named Ann Rowe. And Ann Rowe said in this seminar, she goes, I love talking to my fans. If anyone wants to email me, I'll for sure email you back. So I emailed her. I'm like, hey, this. I gave the specific uh, obituaries that I loved. Yeah. Uh, 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 you're, you're a fan. Catherine, jo- <laughs> Catherine Johnson, Burt's from Burt's Beeswax. Like the, I, those were the yeah. two. I'm oh, like, these guy, are my two favorites. Burt from yeah. Burt's Beeswax is no longer with us? No longer with us. And, and, and if you get a chance to read his economist obituary, you will. Like you'll. It's Oh, man. I'll tell you the whole. It's a very short story. He was dry, uh he was a bee um uh keeper in Maine or Vermont. I forget which one, okay, but either way. I think Vermont. He's a beekeeper up there. Uh one day he's driving down the road and he sees this woman, this young lady, he's an older guy, okay? He sees this young lady, 20 something, you know what I mean? I think maybe like 19, something like a young lady. And he's like 70? He's not 70, but he's older. You know what I mean? You know, he's like 40 or something like that at this period. You know what I mean? Right? So he, it's a hitchhiker. He's young. It's a hitchhiker. Yeah. (laughs) But he's older than this girl. Got you. You know what I mean? mean? But she's just some hippie hitchhiker, right? Got you. He picks her up and everything. He's this bearded, you know, guy living reclusive in the woods. He's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing out here? And she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just like on the road. You know what I mean? I'm just a homeless woman. And he's like, well, you want a little more? You know, hey, you know, I'm making a pass, right? I mean, middle of the woods. She's like, yeah, sure. So she moves in with Bert. And one day she opens up one of his barns and there's a big pile of beeswax. And what it was is he would sell the honey at the farmer's markets from these bees. She goes up to the beeswax. She puts her finger on it. She puts it to her lips and she goes, that's interesting. This is like lip balm. Chapstick, yeah. It's like chapstick. Exact, you know, it does the exact same purpose. You yeah. know what I mean? So she says to him, hey, can I have some money to order little canisters? I'm going to fill them up. I think we can sell them along with the honey at the at the, at the the market. You got to be shitting me. I swear to God. And he goes, yeah, sure, whatever. So, yeah, baby. So, so yeah. I'll get you, yeah, yeah, I'll get you those little canisters. Whatever you, know you mean? want. And so anyway, they put the beeswax in there. And these little canisters, they start selling it. All of a sudden, it's a huge hit at these farmer's markets. All of a sudden, country stores in, in New England start carrying yeah. shit, okay? All of a sudden, it becomes so big that they move the headquarters down to, like, North Carolina or some shit like that, okay? Incorporated in Delaware. They move the headquarters down to North Carolina, some weird shit like that, right? And they move down there. At some point, Burke goes, I want out. I don't like this. I just want to go back to my homestead. I just want to do honey. I just want to literally yeah. be back there. I just want to be back yeah. there with my dogs, ski shooting. I don't want any of this fucking I shit anymore. I just see anymore. him with his just lips all <laughs> super shiny. Like everybody's got a... What do you mean that's a beard? He probably never would use it. He's yeah, probably the only yeah, guy who never did. used it. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? You see the Burt's yeah. Bee household. It's just everybody's so moisturized. So anyway, though, it was so funny, right? Um, uh, cause he knew Roxanne did everything, but his face was on all the different candidates. Yeah, yeah. Right? But Roxanne did like fucking everything. Yeah. And so he, this is all the obituary. They go, Hey, okay. How much do you want to like leave the company? And he said something dumb. He goes like, I want like $85,000. It was something like super. Okay. Yeah. And this, and, and this company at this point was worth millions, yeah. multi-million yeah. dollar company. Okay. So they said, I forget exactly what they they said, but I forget the exact number. But it was something like, "Hey, we're gonna give you three million. Like, yeah. like wait, 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 I know you only asked for eighty five thousand. I, we I feel get bad. it. Yeah, we're gonna give you three million. Like wow. legally, we have to give you at least oh, this okay. in legally. order so that legally. you can't sue us. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, because yeah. we can't take advantage yeah. of you that badly. And they gave him like a three million. He went back and you know ski ski shot and hung out with so his dogs. So happy. Hey, and like seven years later, they sold the company to Procter and Gamble for over a billion dollars. I kid you not. He literally would have been a guy worth hundreds of billions of dollars if he just stuck around. For yeah, but he didn't want while. it. He didn't want it. He yeah. just wanted to be in peace, man. Yeah. And hey, ready for this? That's why Ed Rowe read that story and said, oh, you're you're in the obituary this yeah. week. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. I like that, though. I like a guy oh, I loved it, dude. that I cried is like, uh, it. yeah, it's not about the money. It's not about the money, dude. It's just about my freedom, man. It's about how ha- I, I wanted freedom from day one. Visionary. Even, even when I picked up Roxanne, I, I just wanted someone to talk to. You know what I mean? Like, just such a simple dude, man. And uh, and he kind of had that mentality. And so, yeah. So, anyway, I write in Rowan. I tell her, hey. He did know, have $3 million, too. <laughs> yeah. I tell Ann Rowe, I'm like, hey, I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, uh, uh, are you hiring? You know what I mean? You know, yeah. I ask her, I go, hey, are you hiring? And uh, and I'll never forget what she wrote back. She wrote back, I'm a one-man band. Yeah. She wrote back, you know, Joe, you're awesome. Thank you so much. But I don't have anyone who works with me. You yeah. can look this up. It's just me. I'm a one-man band. Yeah. I re- do all the research. I write, because it's just a one-page article every week, yeah. right? You know what I mean? So it makes sense. Yeah. She's a one-man band. 
But I kind of decided after that, I'm like, in my mind, um, that's the only correct way to live is to be a one man band. Um, um, I think if everyone was a one man band and everyone kind of had their own sort of um, uh, 1099 work ethic in a weird way, this whole world would run so well. And so I decided uh, it's something I love about stand up, something that I love about what we're doing here with this podcast. I decided personally, personally, I meant to be a one man band, mm. whatever that is. I don't know how that's going to play out. You know what I mean? Um, but I meant to be a one man band. And obviously, you're here, obviously, you know, even within a one man band. Ann you Ro, can jam. Yeah. Ann Rowe needs readers. She needs editors, co ed. You know, the, she's in The Economist. It's not like she's the only one who reads it yeah. every week. You know what I mean? Other people proofread right. it, give her some she's, feedback and stuff like that. But effectively, she, her yeah. department is a one man right. band type of thing. You yeah. know? Now, um, and so I kind of she's a one man band in a magazine of many different bands. And even yeah. that's why I like producing movies, man, because when, when you're the producer of the movie, you're kind of you you hang out on set when you when it's happening. But if a producer does his or her job correctly, you're done by the time you're sitting on set. You one man banded it up until yeah. then. You know the, what I mean? Uh, like, well, let's say um, I brought all the toys to the playground. Right. You know what I mean? I'm the one man band who did that shit. And now the team works. Yeah. But I was the one man band who Bert set wanted up. to be a one man band. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Man. Uh, um the I think it's the it's there's a cause what I'm One Man bands can work on teams. This is my point. You know what I mean? No, I got it. Have, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I just figure I'm that. Type you weren't of telling me to leave, were you? No, no. <laughs> no. Uh no, but like what I'm saying is like there's a... Uh, it's it's almost a struggle between desire and control. Yes. You know, like, are you one man band because you want control, or are you just are you just authentically wanting in a one man? You know what I mean? I think everyone wants control, and it's the only way to be ethically in control is if you're a one man band. Otherwise, you have to compromise people. It's tough, man. Right. I think I think most people fall into the other category, and, and we, they and they but, live they live these lives of weird trauma because they never are willing to lower their bar to themselves. They always want something more than who they are. And so they always think some other genius that they're going to scam is going to get it for them. It's like the Winklevoss twin, twins with... Uh, um, um, I don't know who they are. Uh, the Facebook movie. Fuck. You never saw um, uh, the Facebook movie? You know what movie I like? It's Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> they, uh, so so there's that movie that they made about... Um, what's it called? Uh, uh, about Mark Zuckerberg and about his whole story and stuff, right? With Facebook and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, homie that did Seven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Fincher. Yeah, yeah David Fincher. Fincher. Yeah, yeah, I know. I never movie. saw that movie. Such a good movie. Such a good movie. And yeah. uh, Andrew Garfield is incredible in it. <laughs> Spider Man. It, like, it made Andrew Garfield. He's so good because he plays the other guy, the other original co-owner of right. Facebook, the right? The guy that gets fucked. Or but screwed. Yeah, I don't know the story. So it's story. this idea of this: these Winklevoss twins um, come to these two twins at Harvard. They come to um, 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 uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and they go, hey, we have this idea. And they pitch him on the idea and they go, can you build this for us? And he goes, that's a good idea. And he does build it. And then he just calls him up and he goes, I don't need you. Click. You know what I mean? Oh, and, then, and so, is that the story of Facebook? That's the story. That's the story of Facebook. So then they're sitting Got there it. in they're sitting in this scene in the movie. And I think it's a real scene because it's from the, the lawyer transcripts, right? You know, they got preview, they got preview to the lawyer transcripts and everything. So there's this there's a scene, man, where they're all sitting there, all the lawyers around the table, Winklevoss twins, Mark Zuckerberg and everything, and he literally has a computer in front of him. He throws it in front of the Winklevoss twins, and he goes, if you can build Facebook right now, I'll give the whole fucking thing to you. And they just can't. That's like, you know what I mean? Like, in a weird way, it's like, but who were they? They were the guys who were trying to take advantage of a one-man band. Mm. And what is he saying to them? I'm a one-man fucking band. Mm. And after I built this, I realized I'm a one-man mm. band. And I realized you were the dude, dudes trying to take advantage of a one-man band. And you empathize with him, right? But you're like, but there's another part of you. It's like the Winklevoss twins shouldn't get nothing because they did come to him with this idea, but it was just the idea was as simple of it's a digital yearbook. That's that was the idea. We want you to create a digital yearbook. Literally make a yeah. digital yearbook with all the bells and whistles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone will have their own and it'll be the ultimate yearbook. Everyone will have their own page in the yearbook. It won't just be photos. Everyone will have their own page. That's all it was. Digital yearbook. I never really got into it. Facebook, yeah. Yeah, because I was afraid to look at my own personal stats and have them not be awesome. Yeah, you know that, is I mean? a, that is, tell you the truth. I don't, I don't want to know how many friends I got. Fuck, 
what if you have more friends? If I was like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm that, good. That, 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 that did traumatize me for a while too, until I started seeing my peers who went through the gauntlet of it actually have it break through it. You know what I mean? And become famous off of social media. Oh, I understand and, what you mean. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I saw the death of Hollywood and tech companies taking over. And now it's just like, yo, man, this is just where the eyeballs are. This is the medium. It's like if you, it, in a weird way, man, it is the new television, right? So it's like if you want to work on television, you know, you got to. But I applaud you. Be you. Be Johnny Depp. Be the guy who just shows up, performs, and goes, no, man, this is my contribution. Do you want me to contribute in this way? Johnny Depp doesn't watch his own movies. Doesn't watch them. Doesn't watch them. Doesn't care about the stats. Doesn't give a shit about anything. You know what I mean? If a movie bombs and he has to do a lesser movie next time, that's life. Johnny Depp, dude. Yeah, 100%. Dude. That guy's got a fucking career. Yeah, right. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, so. One man band. One man band. I think that also. Uh, to to have your best one man band music, yep. is to like I think it's also like the journey of finding your authentic self. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Which and I is, like simple which is, stuff too. I really like Jack White for that reason. He you know he has Meg White on the drums and stuff, but really the White Stripes is a kind of a very small one man band style outfit. You know. Um, because she just plays the drums, and it's a huge thing. Meg White is a great drummer, but it really is Jack White. I mean, that it really is the White Stripes. Um, sure. Yeah. But it ain't a one-man band. <laughs> Technically isn't. Technically isn't. But but what I mean is, let's say he didn't have... I, I'd like to see you hit these drums. <laughs> I will say this, maybe... But here's the thing. If, if he, for instance... And and if he had not didn't have Meg White, but just hired someone to do drum sessions and then just had that, you know what I mean? And then just layered his own music on top of it, yeah. he would just be Jack White, too. Huh. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it's for really, sure. Yeah, it's really, for when sure. you do the research, he really is. Don't be wrong, Meg White is 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 an amazing drummer. And when the White drummer. Stripes came out, though, like, their music was dope, but it was also that it was just a guy and a girl, yeah. and she was kind of, like, quiet and hot, and so he simple. was, like, you know, the guitar man. And it and really like, was and stuff that they could... they red and white. Yeah. And it was, like... And they could recreate it at concerts and everything like that. Dude, I just saw them as live. The they were them, You know what I mean? And it's so it's just like, it's so crazy that two people can stand up there with just two instruments yeah. and really make it sound like yeah. three or four, basically. Yeah. Um, dude, he's a, he's a stud, too. Dude, he's a god, man. Dude, I, I, felt, I was in the audience uh, with a buddy and like a friend of his, and there was this other girl, and I was like... Nobody gives a fuck about me right now. <laughs> like yeah. everybody was just like, dude, I'll tell he's you, just, he just fucking, I mean, yeah. What well, changed my mentality too about, 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 um, uh, him, about, um, Jack White is, and about his philosophy is I remember I saw this documentary, um, they start him and I think the edge from U2 was a guitar documentary and somebody else, three famous stars. And he said he has this. Oh hobby. yeah. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page. Yeah. He said, he I has saw this, that you saw. Yeah. And I, there's this one scene where he said, you know, he has this hobby where he goes into music shops and he asks for a broken guitar. And then what he does is he writes a song on a broken guitar. Because if you can write a song on a broken guitar, yeah. like that's the ultimate challenge. So he'll be oh, like, really? okay, this guitar only has three strings and it can only hold three strings. Okay. Yeah, I'll you show I mean? you. What, what, is, what does that mean? You know what I mean? And in that thing, he even like makes a guitar like from hand and stuff and, and just starts playing it and everything. And, Pretty and, cool. And it's like just crazy to think that that's actual real music. If you really understand music, you can just lay out some strings on a, on a rock, you know what I mean? And, and put a microphone next to it and start strumming away. And if you have the right ear for it, you can have each string be the notes and, you know, put out the uh, the octaves. Um, or, or uh, yeah, yeah. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So I'm thinking about doing this. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. This, this, is, the, this is the ultimate bit. This is the ultimate bit, right? I, I'm on um, uh, America's Got Talent, okay? And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wheel myself out in my wheelchair, okay, to audition for the audition. And Simon Cowell is there, Holly, Howie Mandel, Sophia Vagina. They're all there. They're all there. They're all there. And I wheel myself out. And I do all these wheelchair puns. 
and you know in front of them and everything and they all clap and stuff because they're like oh i got a wheelchair he's doing wheelchair problems and like that. they clap and stuff and then then ready for this uh they bring me to the main event the main you know theater and stuff and i'm there in the theater and everything and i i wheel myself out i'm in front of again simon uh howie sophia yeah all there and i do my wheelchair puns yep. okay and and everyone's laughing yeah. and then i get to the end and, and big standing ovation because i nailed it yeah. right big standing yeah. out and dude as everyone's giving me a big standing out as everyone's giving me a big standing out you guessed it i then stand, stand up, up. Yeah. i then stand up right and uh and i and i and i and i and i not just take a bow but I, I, I also start applauding, and I turn towards the wheelchair, and I applaud <laughs> the wheelchair. And as I'm applauding the wheelchair, I slowly hear all the applause of the people die down to a silence till it's just me applauding the wheelchair. Oh. And then I don't even leave out the back. I literally leave out the front. Like I walk down off the stage yeah. and I walk, not even down the main aisle, one of the side yeah, aisles yeah. to the back. I push open one of those doors yeah. with a little push thing. And yeah. then you guys hear like the, you know, the giant door yeah. slam shut. And then it's just silence. And the only thing left on that stage, Michael Thomas Gary. Wheelchair. Wheelchair. Dude. That's I, the ultimate satire. That is I the ultimate. Love it. That's the ultimate what satire. The- that's you this time, dude. Oh, that is. What's going on? Mine's in Spanish, too. Well, I mean, they know the water you drink and the light bulbs yeah. you purchase. Yeah, yeah. It's te- a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. Aliens are coming soon, everyone. That's literally... I've never gotten that before. Have you ever gotten that before? I've gotten that sound when it's like amber alerts and shit like that. That's you what, what I, I mean? thought it and was. Like, and like flash floods and everything, but I never got... I'm I so sound. desensitized that I... Yeah, right. Totally. Hundred dude. Like it could be like the the alarm could be aliens are coming. Yeah. You know? And I'll be like I wouldn't I don't even read it. I'm just yeah. like, shut the fuck up. Totally, dude. I'm here Hundred. doing my podcast. Dude, I'm the same way, I'm the exact same one. Um which is that's what happens. Yeah. You know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Uh it, Oh but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't even pay attention I, to shit and you're But getting back to I love that bit, dude. And that they when they, I man, it, it, there's so many, uh, there's so many hoops. To it's jump a movie through. though. It's, it's a, a movie. movie. There's so many hoops to jump through. It is a movie though. You're right. It it's a, a movie. movie. That is a sketch. That is. A, I mean, it would. It's, oh my god! You need a lot of extra. You know what it though. is? You need a lot of extra. It's a. Um, I don't want to say it's a terrorist attack, but it's a. It's a, it's a psychological terrorist. Attack, it's a yeah. revolutionary attack towards the audience. Not the audience, the machine of entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like cuz if cuz the the goal is everybody gets behind you. Look at this wheelchair comedian. He's yeah. so funny. All the three judges are like, "Yeah." And then and then, and then, then you everyone make has everybody to confront, eat, confront the, idea the fact that, that it was just the wheelchair oh. the whole fucking time. Uh, dude. dude like right right brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah man i i hope i get to do it one day yeah i, w- I would yeah. yeah the best the best part is you stand up and then you applaud the wheel that, that's the best part right yeah yeah you you stand up and you give a standing ovation then you turn and, and you like, like you like go like you applaud and you like like to the wheelchair and yeah. then you just slowly the yeah. applause just slowly die as they and it asks a great question what are we applauding yeah. You know what? You know what, man? I, I have trouble with stand up. I don't think I'll, I've never envisioned myself as have as having like a Netflix special or anything like that. I've just never done that. I've never envisioned that in my mind, mostly because I just hate groups of people. I hate crowds of people. I hate people. I love people one on one, but I hate people. On the, I, lo- I believe totally believe that George Carlin thing where as soon as people get together in groups as small as three people, just the, uh, they lose a part of their soul. Yeah, but Carlin had like the most specials oh yeah no no certain people what it is is they it's like jerry seinfeld he's making fun of the audience but the audience never catches on he's like you ever notice yeah you ever notice your fucking self that's what he's really saying (laughs) he's really telling everyone you're a bunch of morons Mm. you're all a bunch of goddamn morons because you don't see it because you don't see it it. yeah Uh. and he just does it in this jovial way where everyone laughs because everyone thinks they're that person that thinks that everyone else is a moron well now i feel insulted by Jerry son. <laughs> oh, dude, that's why you had to leave. I think on top before people caught on. I'm like, hey, this guy's making fun of us. 
<laughs> him and his buddies are just literally calling us idiots every day. Oh my god! Yeah, through everything they do. Yeah, I feel like a, I feel like an idiot. But calling themselves of an idiot too, right? You know what I mean? That's the idea: yeah. is that you're detached from your ego, where mm. you just say, "Hey, I'm a part of this mess too." Aren't we all fucking morons? Because right? Because if there's a wheelchair comic up on the stage, I'd applaud too for the wheelchair. That's the whole thing. I'm 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 doing satire against myself in that moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, no, I'm it's a uh, part of the whole. I get it, everyone. It's a, it's an amazing piece of art. Yeah, and I, I want to do completely that. support it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One uh, day I hope I get to do it, dude. The uh, so back. So what were you saying about stand up? You don't like it because of the crowds. I I I like it. I like I love doing stand up, but that whole thing where Dave Chappelle says I like crowds. Crowds are my friends. I've never felt. I think it's because of my childhood and stuff like that and all this trauma, dude. I, I guess I, I can't get behind the idea that groups of people, I feel groups of people, if given a chance, would not like a guy like me unless it's like, I'm unless I just, I, here's the thing. I think I can catch on like a, George, like a, like a Carlin or a Seinfeld and yeah. stuff, but I just have to hit that right voice thing and then just keep it going. Yeah. And then you just, but one, one, but what I'm getting at is those people are reclusive people for yeah. a reason. They were reclusive, Carlin and yeah. Seinfeld right now, they're untouchable people for a reason. They don't want to be, it's not like, they're not like a big Jay Ogerson. They're not getting involved like that. But you there's different mean? crowds, right? Crowds isn't just one thing. You know, like there's different, like, so here's the thing I always trip out about. Uh, so a lot of people, they've got tickets to something at Madison Square Garden, right? Yeah. And so they'll come into the restaurant prior to, and they'll let you know they're going to go see fucking whoever, you know? Yeah. And um, that's a huge crowd that I'm not there. You know, so there's many different crowds. They also yeah. do different shows. It's not that one. You know what I mean? So maybe you just haven't found your crowd. I have this theory where certain people have a character that I really like. And um, in Hollywood, in cancel culture, in modern times, certain people get canceled and certain people don't. And I have a theory. A lot of it is certain people have a persona of a born villain. And so, in fact, it's kind of funny. Um, mean they they play devil's advocate. Does this make sense? They play devil's advocate. Yeah, that's like their their role basically. Yeah. Okay. And so then, when cancel culture comes, it comes for them first because subconsciously, people though they love them hate them. I'm gonna Louis C.K. Um, Dalia was one of these people. Marilyn Manson for sure. You know, what I mean, he even has an album named Born Villain for that reason. Um, these are people that are primed to be canceled. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know their personal lives. I have no idea about their personal lives. I'm just saying there's definitely so many scumbags that, that, that got skipped over in Hollywood. And why did those people get picked? Those people got picked because they play that role of devil's advocate. And people are like, you got to go first. 100%. Yeah. You now see it with Russell Brand and stuff. You know what I mean? Whenever people go, hey, man, I'm going to swim upstream. You do it at, at at your own pearl, and it's fine. You know what I mean. You know people want to do that, um, but but that is the uh, that is the dangerous fact of it. So Johnny yeah. Johnny Depp, it even caught up to him, but he, you know he went to court over it. You know what I mean. You right. know it, it's it's this idea of is if you're always going to play that role, um, um, uh, that sort of devil's advocate role, that sort of like uh, if you guys want to act like that, you can, but I'm not going to. Which is Johnny Depp's whole persona, right? It just is this thing yeah, where society loves you but wants you gone at the same time. It's fucking weird, dude. One of the things that but, I loved, man, yeah. is when I did um, Comedy Fight Club recently and Dakota went against me. And Dakota goes, I asked around about you, Joe, and no one likes you. And I laughed because I go, that's true. That's true. She did okay, ask around so now, about okay, me. Because no I, I don't know those other people, right? Yeah, yeah. But I know you. Yeah, yeah. So are you saying you're a born villain? I'm saying I'm the type of person that will always, always, always at least question the status quo. And that always gets me in trouble. But isn't that just an artist? One would like to think. <laughs> but I mean... But in modern times, I don't think so. Well, in modern times, um, it's very much... Uh, it depends what you're looking for, for. I think if your goal is to just speak your truth, then you made it. 
Yeah, exactly. And that, that's you know? that's the whole thing. My heroes are the people who have done that. So regardless, um, but it's unless you're like, shooting for speak your truth, but also get paid, yeah, 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 which yeah. is a that's another thing. Dude, one of my favorite comedy albums of all time is Anthony and Jesselnik's Thoughts and Prayers. And um, and he just basically talks at the end how he made this tweet and and uh, it's called Th- Thoughts and Prayers because because he made because he made this tweet about the Boston bombings day of. And Comedy Central made him take it down. Otherwise, they were going to cancel the show. And he caved and he took it down. And he goes, that's the biggest regret of my entire life. Oh, wow. He goes, I would have let every one of those motherfuckers get fired today. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, because he just hurt him so badly. Yeah, yeah. That he, he was just selling yeah. his fucking soul in that way, dude. And and he talks about his, it's called Thoughts and Prayers, because that's what everyone writes. Is that when the one in the uh, abortion clinic? I don't know. But, oh, my but, God. But he talks. He talks about how he talks about how how when, whenever a tragedy happens, people write thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Oh, but gotcha. he goes, what, what they're really writing is, remember me. Don't yeah, forget. Don't yeah, forget yeah, to think yeah. about me today and how yeah. sad I am. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole. That's the whole, that's the yeah. thing that he says. That's the quote and stuff. Yeah. And so it's people one are of like, most, how was I at that other person's funeral? Yeah, yeah. You know, or how was I at their wedding? You and know, as if it yeah, matters. Yeah. And yeah. so like um what what he says is when I'm making jokes, I'm making fun of those people. I'm making fun of the people who write thoughts and prayers. When I'm making uh, a joke day of of a tragedy, I'm not making fun of the tragedy. Right. I'm making fun of the people yeah, who write the, thoughts and the prayers. The phonies. You know what I mean? And what it is is the people, fugazis. Is 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 Comedy Central said if you do that, you're and this is what I'm getting at. Comedy he he did that and comedy central didn't get it they go you're fired unless you take that down yeah. and, and 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 that is and and so he did well, that's and the... now he doesn't have a comedy central show anymore because you know next chance they got they're like we gotta we gotta get rid of this guy mm. this guy's just gonna swim upstream and it's only a matter of fucking time this guy isn't that just a story spit. like like a young joe camarota when he was left out of the will yeah all that all that you yeah. know yeah yeah all that all that shit dude yeah yeah no 100 percent, man it's uh uh for for yeah for I guess being too reckless with with the truth. You no, know you I mean? weren't reckless with the no, truth. No, you were but, just being yourself. Yeah, just being myself. But but, yeah. but 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 it's perceived as oh this guy's a loose cannon. So he yeah, but it be, be managed. You but know you I mean? that's, it's, but it's, but that's it's not even better that. than using me. Yeah. that's better than falling in line so you get your reward. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And I hate to say it, man, but it, it is. I, I don't identify with the devil at all, but it is that idea of of paradise lost, where you know, you know, saying goes better to serve in hell than to better to ser- better to rule in heaven, better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, and my life is is object in certain ways objectively shittier for for not having cooperated. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, with uh, people like my uncle Sal and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, for 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 going against him as I should have, um, my life has taken a lot of beatings. Uh, so I've gone through hell, but it's better to rule in hell. Um, and that's why people relate to Paradise Lost. But you know, don't get me started. I mean, there, there's a, a <laughs> do they? <laughs> no, they do. You, they do. You really you really roll with a intellectual crew. Ah, uh, uh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, Satan and Lucifer are, are two interesting characters in the whole. Uh, Satan represents the hierarchy of men, and Lucifer is the light bringer. It represents literal light. It represents technology. Who's so, who's Beelzebub? Uh, they all have different names, and I forget the uh, Beelzebub is Lord of the Flies. I thought they were all devils. Okay, so uh, the yeah. devil is more than one. So there's all these Drop different the knowledge on me, dog. So the way the angels have names, um, devil demons also have names. Demons are just angels. Um and oh, there's it, not just one devil like one god? N- no, yeah. Well, yeah, there's not well, one. Well the devil's devil. a fallen angel, I heard. Yeah, exactly. The devil's a fallen angel, so there's many fallen angels and they all have names, just like all the uh, angels have names. So Michael is um who is like God. That's what Michael means, is who's like God. He's the Michael and Gabriel the are the uh, the archangels. Okay. The angels with swords. So actually, I'll tell you, it's 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 an interesting thing. What Michael means is it means humility. It means who is like God. Okay, so that's what, it's it's literally humility. It's I didn't want to like say it. Yeah. So yeah, Michael Thomas here, yeah, everyone. <laughs> means who is like God. So uh, so this is definitely very interesting to break down. I'll definitely uh, uh, break down. You have this war in heaven now. Now picture what I'm about to tell you. You have the war in heaven is often. Um, presented as this it's it's uh it's god versus satan like you just thought but it's not it's michael and his army versus satan and satan's army and lucifer and lucifer's army so satan and lucifer are running this one army and michael is running this other army i still can't get over the fact that satan and lucifer are 
different 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 beings different beings okay um um so um michael is running his army and satan and lucifer are running their army. okay uh-huh. okay you understand what's happening i got you and 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 both of them are created by god now here's what i'm getting at even though angels are more powerful than us as human beings theoretically this uh-huh. is in this whole idea they're still just as helpless in the eyes of God as us because they're creatures. God can end your life the same as God can end an angel's life. Do you go in, you go in, or a demon's life? I got okay? you. Okay, so, so, so it doesn't matter. It's the same way if, if you live 100 years or 200 years, it actually doesn't really matter because you're going to be dead for way longer. So 100 years and 200 years is almost the same percentage-wise as, as uh, against eternity. You understand what I'm getting at logic I got you. Okay, yeah, 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 I got you. So us and a giant are, are just as weak, are equally weak in the eyes of God, which is the Almighty. So you have Michael, and there's rankings of angels, and you can look up these rankings of angels. There's rankings based on power, okay? Now, Michael is an archangel. It's a very low power. It's a very low angel. It's just above a guardian angel. Very, 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 very low. Okay? Now, the idea is, is this realm of angels is actually on top of... Guardian angel or the bottom? They're towards the bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 here's the idea is that the this realm of angels is, is a realm on top of our realm. Okay. Okay. So it's a realm on top of our realm. So it's constantly going on around us, just like guardian angels are always sitting by you and everything like that. Right. You just can't just see it. Just upset at being at the bottom, helping now, you this dumb fuck out. Don't even get me started, but it, it is actually, what are angels? They're winged beings. What are fairies? They're winged beings. It's the same story. So that's another thing. This is a pagan, an old pagan thing. There's this world on top of our world filled with fairies. Um, Christian and Judaism, same exact story. In fact, Islam, same exact story. It's always these winged creatures. That's why people think it might be kind of true. You know what I mean? It's always these winged creatures that live in this world on top of our world. That's the exact same story. Angels and demons in one in 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 uh, Christianity and Judaism and Islam. Uh, in Islam, they call the bad angels jinns. There's all these different names, but either way, it's always the same thing. It's a winged creature. But in paganism, they just call them fairies. Literally, it was the exact same legend. Okay, these winged creatures. Some are good. Some are bad. Blah blah. blah. Some help humanity. Some are trying to destroy humanity. Everything like that. So anyway, you have this story. So you have these uh, these supernatural winged creatures. Good guys and bad guys. Now, the good guys, their leader is Michael. And his name means who is to like, who is like God. Okay? So he represents humility. He's a very low angel. Now, Lucifer um, and Satan are high angels. They're the highest. Yeah. In fact, the legend yeah. goes is that yeah. they are the very highest angels. Okay? Yeah. So they go, man, they're looking at Michael. It's like an ant standing up to a giant. They go, you can't defeat me. There's yeah. no way. And Michael says, yes, I can. Yeah. Because I can defeat you with the power of God. If I bow down to God and surrender to God, yeah. that will defeat you. That will. And what they're saying is you can't defeat me because I'm on the top of the hierarchy. Now, let's get into who Satan and Lucifer are. Satan um, is, means the accuser. How does accu- how, accuser means a, it's either, they don't say a good, that's the interesting thing. They, when they will say it means the accuser, they think it's a person that's accusing you of doing bad, okay? Well, here's the thing. It can be a person that's accusing you of doing good, right? Like what? The judger. Like a, like a manager, Okay. Yeah. A manager tells a good big accusing based on what? Okay. It's just the accuser. It's a very vague statement. What it is is that um, Satan is the god of hierarchies. So he's the accuser. He's the god of hierarchies. He tells you, you know, either you, are you good or bad? And if you're bad, I'm going to send you to hell. If you're good, you know what I mean? You know, uh, but, but good and bad based on who? Either way, the idea is that he is the representation right. of the hierarchy. And Michael says, hey man, I can do, even though you're at the top of the hierarchy, looking down on everyone, accusing everyone, telling them what's good and what's bad, I can beat you because you're not God. You don't have the right to be doing mm. that. Even though you identify as the accuser because you're on the top of the hierarchy you can identify as the accuser you can name yourself that but that doesn't mean that's what you are actually in the eyes of god okay so michael defeats Satan. now who's lucifer this is where it gets even wilder lucifer is the prometheus the prometheus myth myth it means the light bringer so you go okay what's the adam and eve story adam and eve eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil uh um which was given to them by the devil lucifer Satan, but either way, uh, let's look at it from the Lucifer perspective. What did Lucifer give to them that all of a sudden they became like gods? Well, he gave them fire. Because think about it. Let's say you don't have fire. You're like a dog. What's the difference between us and animals? We can control fire. What do I mean? You smoke a cigarette. That's handling fire. People who smoke cigarettes, with my 
weed pen. This heats up the coil. You know what I mean? It's literal fire, okay? So I'm handling fire, all this. We can handle fire. Now, the idea is, is animals can't do that. That's actually the fundamental difference between animals and people, okay, is that people can handle fire. Now, you might say, well, what does this fire get us? What do you mean, what does it get us? It gets you a fucking phone. Okay, between the process of heating and cooling metals and plastics and all that, you eventually make technology. So Lucifer is the light bringer. He's the bringer of technology. This is why monks, what they what they leave is they leave the hierarchy of the world and they suppress um, luxuries. That's the word luxury comes from Lucifer. It means light. Uh, luxury lux means light in um in uh in Latin. Okay, so it comes from this. Lucifer is the light bringer. What does the light bringer bring? Light bringer brings luxury. This is why evil people get into this level of excess with their life. They get into a level of, of luxury. So if you want to stay away from the devil, it's pretty simple. You stay away from hierarchies and you stay away from luxury. Now you might say Beelzebub. What does that mean? It means Lord of the Flies. It's another word for hierarchy. It's just it all comes back to those two Lord things. of the Flies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hierarchies yeah. and luxuries. That's what the devil tempts you with. The devil goes, hey, man, don't you want to have power? Yeah. Don't you want to have luxuries? You know what I mean? That's what the devil tempts you with, yeah. right? That's the job of the devil, basically. So Michael represents humility. Um, the uh, the devil represents hierarchies and luxuries. And the idea is, is humility, in the end, always defeats yeah. hierarchies and luxuries. It's a, a David will always defeat Goliath um, yeah. through the power of God. Through the power of God. If you are humble... You will not stumble. Yeah, it's kind of the idea. Yeah, 100%, 100%. David beats Goliath through the power of God. Michael beats Satan through the power of God. It's the exact same story. It's the exact same story. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy how you can apply that to reality in terms of, like, greed. And, you know, it's, like, spot on. Yeah, 100%. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's got a text... Yeah, man, um, that's uh, the idea. One, I think I talked about it last time. There's a book called The Master Margarita. That's a lot about it because it's a. Uh, uh, there's a book called The Master Margarita, and after reading it, Mick Jagger wrote Sympathy for the Devil because it's all about how the devil is out there being like, "Hey, can I get you some power, some money, what do you, some luxury? What do you, what do you want? You know what I mean?" Those just out there handing it out. Almost thinking he's a good guy, you know yeah, what I mean? In the yeah. process, you know what I mean? So yeah. and, and people are like, "Yeah, man, that is what I want." That's you know a good what I mean? call, like, though. Does the devil have self awareness? Uh, Not that you would. I mean, obviously, we're theorizing, but um, yeah, I think the devil just just uh, or is he the devil just a suck hole? <laughs> I think the devil. Oddly enough, thinks that the devil is right. Right. That, right. that that's like the whole I, I, idea. Is and that God the, is just a drag. No, it's not even that. I think what's what's kind of weird about the devil is to a certain extent the devil might think that the devil is doing God's will. And in a weird way, yeah, might, okay. think, might think I'm playing my role. You know what I mean? That's, and, where, it, that's where it gets funny. And, too, if right? God, and also, too, if God is everything or God is nothing, the devil is a part of God, which brings you back to the question <laughs> that, that, of that, like... That, that's another weird thing that you which get Which is like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what what's up? God. Yeah, and what's interesting is 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 uh, Judaism does allow for exactly what you're just saying. Judaism allows. Judaism says it's all part and parcel of the game. So Judaism says that. Uh, uh, do you want to? You can fix it a little bit. You don't think? Do I? Do I look like I fucking struggling over here? Because <laughs> then it's like life is not like this uh, utopia. It's uh, a experiment. Yeah, it might be, which, man. Which actually makes a lot more sense. It might actually be this weird experiment, yeah. Um, uh, some sort of uh, game of sorts of kind of staying away from hierarchies and luxury, really. Because that's I, what traps people up. Every, I that's think what it's a good, up every single time. I think it's a good... Uh, they hear people, people fear hierarchies more than they fear God. That's like the whole thing, right? You know what I mean? People literally compromise their morals because they fear hierarchies more than they fear God. Um, and they 100%. fear they fear loss of luxury more than they fear God. Yeah, and so it's that's always the thing. And those are the two tools of Satan and Lucifer. And but but once again, it's right in the names. You know what I mean? Lord of the Flies, the Accuser, um, uh, uh, the Light Bear. It's literally well, all in the I, names. I, and yeah. I, but I think Kinda it's great because it brings us back to where we started. In a holy oh, shit! Now you got in trouble. T- technical. There we go. It brings, which is the the idea of what happened, how you 
gave up the hierarchy for freedom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I I lived it, man. Um, and in that way, better. I just saw it wasn't worth it. I always tell people that, man. Something I always laugh, right? Because people always go, oh, "I'm trying to lose my ego." trying to lose my ego yeah yeah and i yeah. go oh man mine was ripped away from me at 13 like, what the fuck are you? i literally can't get back the way you're trying to lose it i can't get back isn't that wild dude yeah i then that's why you see me just i just come out to do my stand-up you know what i mean i kind of people sonia one day asked me she goes joe she goes why do you do new stuff every single time i'm like why not she's like well don't you want this to go someplace i'm like i don't know you know what I mean? Like, but what she's trying to say is like, what about these hierarchies over here? And then what I really want to say to her is I've, I've emailed all the clubs. They don't like me. They don't mm. like my act. You know what I mean? They don't like my act. They, they will go, you punch down. They'll say weird shit like that. You know what I mean? Which I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that means. Yeah. Well, it just means that they don't feel like they can make money off you. I don't know. I don't know what it means, man. I, cause I you're go, gonna... I go to their thing and I'm like, seems like every girl here is punching down on dudes and you're fine with that. You know what I mean? So like, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, about punching down, man. Well, Everyone here is maliciously, uh, uh, talking shit left and right. You know what I mean? You just don't like the shit that I talk because it's not the shit that you're supposed to talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I always hate, man. People go, Oh, you, we don't like punching down here at this club. Yeah, but Fuck I mean off. that's just another. Yeah. Well, there's always different ways, right? Like they could just say not interested. Oh yeah. Well, they don't say that, but I mean, it's like like I remember Tiny Comfort actually posted it the other day. It was so funny. They posted like about their club. They're like, we're not like other clubs. Like like our. They actually posted this. They were like, our comics, our our audience tend to be a bit more intellectuals. Like we don't like comics that punch down. I'm like reading this. I'm like, dude. I'm like, wait. like it's like cancer going over there. You know what I mean? Well, like, you got to market yourself, get involved. right? Yeah. Meanwhile, they had Leo C on there every week back in the day, and then he shoots up a subway. You know what I mean? Remember that guy? No. Do you remember this dude? There was this comedian named Leo C. People hate that I talk about this shit, too, because he was such a dick. But I, I hated him, but other people like him. But I called it, dude. He was uh, this guy, man, and he was a comedian. And uh, uh, he he had like a teardrop tattoo and everything and stuff. And, and, uh, and I always knew I'm like, this guy's actually dangerous. Like, like, but other people were like, no, he's a nice guy. I'm like, dude, I'm like, this guy's malicious at times. I can tell he's dangerous and everything like that. Uh, he did comedy for a while. Sure enough, man, he got in a fight with somebody on the subway and pulled out a gun and shot some dude. A dude lived, but now he's on the run. He's on the run still. He's in like Costa Rica or something. No one fucking knows. Dude. Fuck. Still on the run, dude. And I knew I'm like, this guy's dangerous. You know what I mean? But it was because he would always kind of virtue signal in the right ways. You know what I mean? The tiny cupboard's like, yeah, you. You virtue signal in the right ways. Mm. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you can't even see character, man. But like, I think, This guy's for real. He's about to shoot somebody. But all that is like, I mean, you know, you know, with the, all that, like, people are just trying to be, you know, it's like what you're saying. People are trying to be a success. So, or like, but I think also people... I think there's also people that go to clubs and don't like what they hear, so they want to go to another club, and so there's an audience. There's no, there's no fan. There's no right or wrong. No yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, yeah. If you, you know, like, listen, if you're making, if you're making, that, if you're making, club, Hunter, if you're making money, you're making money, and if you enjoy yeah, what you're doing, you enjoy what you're club, doing. Hundred ten percent. Hundred ten percent. Hundred ten percent. You know, you want to be the. F but, you know, but I will say this: it's like um, um, um. Parafan once wrote a, uh, a tweet, which I found so true, which is like, hey, man, all these clubs say that they want you to be reckless and talk and talk your shit until you start talking shit about the club and about things mm. like that. You know what I mean? Then they draw the line and it's like, well, you don't really want this then because that is the ultimate um, thing because comedians live their lives in that scene. You know what I mean? So if you really want to hear what they think, let them talk their shit about the scene itself. Otherwise, it's always just going to be this bullshit thing until people. And, and there are places where people do do that, and that is kind of allowed, basically. Um, comedy store back in the day used to be that to a point where it actually, be, where a strike, an actual comedian strike happened back in the day, um, which was wild, where like Letterman like uh, crossed to the side of the comics and stuff, like in front of Mitzi Shore and everything like that. Like it's crazy shit like that, dude. That wouldn't happen nowadays, dude. Can you imagine comedians striking the stand? No fucking way, dude. It's, it's not, for whatever reason, man, that integrity is gone, dude. Well, it's a integrity being. I'm mean, out now. 
right? Yeah. But like, I think it's a part of the same story where it's just like, all you have control over is your one man band. Yes, hundred percent. So like, yeah. whatever and nowadays, goes on nowadays, around you, yeah, nowadays especially. Nowadays, especially. whatever goes on around you, just be your one man band. Yeah. And uh, if you're into like results, it's gonna get hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing, man. You have to. You have to. Uh, if you're if you're gonna speak your truth, you have to. Um. Um. You have to. Be okay with never resonating. Um, yeah, and that's dude. like a, that's like an interesting there thing. Is, you have to dude. literally be okay with just never, never fucking resonating. resonating because maybe yeah. your individual self is truly so much of an individual self that if you talk your shit, you just might never fucking resonate. Well, dude, you ever like you ever go to a grocery store and look at all the products that you don't buy? Yeah, isn't yeah. that crazy? Like, there's multiple products you don't buy that are stocked full in multiple stores that yeah. you and you never buy those but there but people are buying that stuff yeah. because it's there so like who the fuck are you to say you know what's good you only just say what what is good for you you know what i mean yeah i think that is uh you know uh I, I don't know. I always trip out about that. I'm like, God, I would never buy any of... I don't even eat cereal anymore. You know, oh, no, like, look a, at all these cereals. It's a 100% individualized adventure in that way and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, but I definitely... Uh, People are eating cereal. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, definitely, I definitely feel there's a... Uh, I definitely feel... Personally, I feel the clubs that I see do the strongest. I feel the comedy cellar is a place where people can talk shit on the comedy cellar a little bit or talk sh a little bit more shit because they have reached the top, basically. I guess maybe that's a privilege of the top where you can finally talk Ooh. shit on all on, on the system itself, basically, a little bit more. I, I think there I don't think there's a problem. You know? Yeah. I think um might not be. I think it's like like that it's just how life is yeah, you know yeah. um you you can't always get what you want yeah maybe try sometimes you just might find you get what you need bro you know, that way. Yeah, it's, it's true. Tr and that's a hard it's especially true. when you invest a lot of stuff into something well that that's the other thing too is you it's, want something back in a weird know? way like i've talked about before you know i have my grievances with certain places and stuff like that but i also just don't go there for that reason right Perfect. you know what i mean easy. i just go i just go well that's not for me you know what i mean i just go it's my the other, i just go thing. yeah it's the easiest thing in the world to do like um, people getting upset with certain people saying stuff yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. whatever it's just like why the fuck are you yeah listening to them yeah, yeah, yeah because you want them to only say what you believe it's true. It's true. But, but which that, is so weird. But that, but that being said, though, that being said, I do find it this way. It's like John Stewart said. John Stewart said, "Me and my friends are guys who sit in the back of the room and throw spitballs from the back of the room." So here's the thing, man. If you're not going to let me in the front of the room, okay, fine. My place is in the back of the room. Okay, I'll come here. I'll have this little fucking show, dude, and I'll fucking throw my spitballs from the back of the room. And maybe nobody pays attention to those spitballs, but that is my place now. You yeah. know what I mean? So in a weird way, it's like. If you don't talk your shit, it's not entertaining. So there's that sort of demographic too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I way. think it's like uh, there is no room. You know, yeah. just just throw your spitballs. Yeah, you know, or whatever your craft is. I think that's the only honest way is to throw spitballs from the back of the room until the teacher goes, "Hey, we kind of like your spitballs." You know what I mean? Come up here to the front, basically, in a weird way. Um, there you go. Maybe, I think that is the maybe journey. we should all be throwing spitballs. <laughs> that's what I do think. That's the thing is I think, man, I don't agree with every comedian, but I do love it when someone's being authentic. It's you know, the best. It's, it's the best. like a frequency. It's and, like a radio wave, and you can just tell that you're like this guy's fucking. Tr this person, yeah, yeah, is there. That's real. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah, like yeah. you could. It's. There's Palp, a certain like, nonchalantness to it that I, that, I, I believe it's like a, you're the technical guy, but I believe it's like a different frequency. Yeah, because 100%. everybody tunes in. Yeah, hundred percent, and it's bananas. Hundred percent, hundred percent. People are fucking around on their phone, eating their nachos, whatever yeah. the fuck. But then all of a sudden, like everybody's listening. 
Yeah. It's bananas. And I think here's what happened, man, is is back in the day, I think that used to be more the norm. And few, so few people... Well, they definitely didn't have phones to look at. Yeah, so so few people came out to try their luck because so few people thought that they could accomplish that. And now, in recent years, um, Ayn Rand called it the enshrinement of mediocrity. What Ayn Rand said is this, is people show... people. She noticed in her lifetime that people were starting to show up for the mediocre. And the reason they were starting to show up for the mediocre is it lowers the bar. So makes sense. If you start to show up yeah, for the mediocre, yeah. you go, oh, I can be that. You yeah. know what I mean? Andy Warhol kind of predicted it. It was um, um, uh, everyone in the future will have their 15 right. minutes of fame. And, and, it, and it was through this lowering of the bar. Right. Hey, I'm not going to do... I'm not going to do Michelangelo style paintings anymore. I'm going to take a photo of Marilyn Monroe and just colorize that. You know what I mean? I'm going to do shit. shots fired Warhol. I'm going to do. I'm just going to do kind of easy shit that yeah. was difficult at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But later on, that thing would become Instagram. That yeah. thing would become this easy thing that people would do digitally later on. Um, and I have a gripe about that, by the way. With what? With like uh, certain modern art, and it's oh, really? just one man's opinion. But right. like, you you ever go to like MoMA or something? And yeah. you're like, you're like, damn, that painting took a lot of fucking time for yeah, this yeah. motherfucker to make. And yeah. then there's like a just fuck, a splatter painting, spla- like a block, you know. Yeah. And you're like, yo, fuck this guy. Yeah, that's exactly. who you feel like they're fucking with you. That's called I feel the, like that's called the enshrinement of mediocrity. The idea is, is you lower the bar so that so that it's almost anyone's game. It's mm. literally almost anyone's game. And once again, it. It, it puts things into the hierarchy because now the game isn't being the best artist. The game is showing up at the cocktail parties, mm. kissing the right asses, everything like that, right? So it's actually just, I ran called the enshrinement of mediocrity. And you see it all over art. Um, it started to happen in her lifetime. It, it, like I said, it, it started, it ramped up even more in the 1980s, um, pop music and stuff like that. You, If you listen to um, uh, 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 Taylor Swift, she sucks, man. If you listen to Taylor Swift and then you go and listen to Amy Winehouse, you're like, oh, yeah. This is way better. But like objectively. That's, that's one man's opinion. I don't know, man. I'm not I'm talking even I would I would be hard pressed to put on a Taylor Swift song, Taylor Swift Love Story, and then put on Valerie by 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 Amy Wiles and to, to, but to that's any a taste person. thing. Like I, I, don't I know, agree man. with you taste wise. Amy I don't Winehouse know, man. is a shit, but like yo like it's like the serial analogy. Like No, yo, no, I, I get that. Taylor I get that, Swift but, like s- sells Tickets that are like five hundred or more, you know, like people and people pay. But 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 I will. You're no, hundred percent correct, hundred percent correct. But it's like this. It's like okay, yes, Tom, it's a movement. Tom Petty is way less. Tom Petty is way less complicated than Pink Floyd. I'm with you there, okay. But it doesn't mean Tom Petty is like is sucks. Tom Petty's amazing because it still kind of comes from the heart in a weird way. Now, what I mean is Valerie... You Swift's not coming from the heart. Nowadays, shit is just fucking put out there. It's Bo Burnham called it, man, when he started breaking things down and being like, yo, man, they're just literally feeding you the same shit over and over and over again. They literally have figured it out to a science and stuff. But that's been said they, for years. They've, they've been trying mediocrity and then... And don't get me wrong, there are certain people who come around and are so good at it, right? It's like when sampling started, everyone's like, well, this is kind of easy, but then Kanye comes along you're like, whoa, hey. <laughs> well, so, you know what so I mean, right? This is all you know? true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? This is all true. Yeah. Great. But like, what, then one has to ask themselves, how much is my opinion uh, uh, biased by my own jealousy? There is that, 100%. Um, you know? um, but also, too, it's just like, there is that 110%. Um, but... I, or maybe what I thought was real, I was wrong. But I think I think here's the thing that I think. I think you have to look at art and you have to say, does this have a point? And if the point is to sell records, then it doesn't have a point. If the point is to make money, then it doesn't have a point. And so many things are just cookie cutter saying. for I that reason. You know I mean, so you look at even though Tom Petty is way simpler than Pink Floyd, you still go, nah, man. This guy has a message. He has a point. You know what I mean? Um, American Girl is is a is a is a is a song. Where you're like, wow. You're like this is really this is America. This is um, reaching down to the soul of who we are and how we think and stuff. And, he, and Mellencamp was the same way. John Mellencamp, and it was it's very. Um, they're very similar artists in that way. And, and like I said, much more simpler than a Pink Floyd. Of course, much more simpler than a Pink Floyd. Um, 
But that being said, they had a point. And a lot of this stuff, man, I, I would love to ask Taylor Swift, what is your point? What is your point? She would sit there and actually stare at you in anger. If you said to Taylor Swift, what is your point? What is the one fucking takeaway that, 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 that you want to get to your audience? I feel like Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. When you listen to the Nine Inch Nails song only, I feel that's like his, his, the time where he was the most direct. Where he's like, this is my point to everything that I do. And I think Pink Floyd songs like Mother and stuff like that, song just the whole wall album in general, but ju but just um uh just the opening the opening he, you know um so it was it go so you thought you might like to go to the show to feel the warm thrill of confusion that space cadet glow is this not what you expected to see um is there something bothering you is it not what you expect to see if you want to find out what's behind these cold eyes you just have to blow your way through this disguise that's how the wall opens dude you know what i mean sure. like it opens saying hey man um um things that you think are real aren't real and things that you think aren't real might be real and it starts but that's not like journey. a hot take no, but then when you get into things like where he's yelling later on in the album, you know what I mean? Like um, where he's talking about the wall. He's like, all the black people over the wall, all the Jews over the wall, all the gays over the wall. And he's talking about the people that get thrown into enlightenment first because of trauma and stuff like that. Like it all just now, goes. Now you know what I mean? That's like exactly, it really. Well, I mean, that's what we were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, like, you sit there and, 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 uh, and the song Mother and, 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 uh, um, you know, just, just, it, you know, after he opens with a thing, all of a sudden you hear a baby cry. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I, things, it's like how we talked about Arrested Development at the beginning. There was certain times where people had points, right? And music has points yeah. and that still exists. And when you listen to Amy Winehouse, you're like, yo, you're like, this is a person that's longing to be free as a degenerate. And that's what well, this music is all about. I think, but I, I think everything like maybe starts a certain way with a point right yeah and you either keep hitting that again and again or you evolve no that's fine right? but, but but and but, that's just part of it but if you keep hitting it again and it still works you know maybe that's fine maybe that's all you want to do great What's great art always has a point and i love it even 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 where bill hicks at the end of his special when he talks about the whole the world is a ride and everything like that remember that thing he says he says does my act have a point it has to have a point he says that you know what i mean it must have a point i'm up here you know and so and so what even he as an artist and the most chaos driven artist ever in my mind is bill hicks but even he said i owe my audience a point what am i trying to say up here with everything that i say and the whole, the, the world is a ride. You know, it's that famous speech that he gives. And he opens it up with saying, do I have a point? What is my point? I have to have a point. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what great art is, man. Great art has a fucking point. And if you ask the artist, what it's like this, quiet quitters. What is the point? We're, we're journeying towards this idea of quiet quitting. You know what I mean? It, it, it always brings us back to that. You're always challenging me on everything that I'm saying with like, well, Joe, why do you care about these other people? You know what I mean? Why don't you just quiet quit all that shit and do your own thing, blah, 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 yeah. right? That's like the whole point of this show is to always be asking that, why are we holding on to stuff? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so if anyone goes, Joe, what's the point of this show? The point of the show is that struggle, that struggle to quiet quit, that struggle to just let quiet things- Quiet quit the argument, be, dude. To let it be. It's you have your be. fucking- Favorite yeah. ice cream flavor, and yeah. I'll have my favorite ice cream flavor, yeah. and we can just be happy and talk. But but it's it's a process. I don't of need talk. to convince. Yeah, I think convincing is is uh, taken over for enjoyment of life. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Oh yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Yeah, Robert Anton Wilson with the proof, with the thinker things, the prover proofs. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And it, it seems like everyone's just. We're focusing on convincing people and like no one's having fun you know <laughs> like, oh yeah dude yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah dude and once again here's the thing man i i i enjoy listening to taylor Swift songs so 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 there is that but i will say it's just not um high art the way that amy winehouse was high art and, and i can and if you go why i go well it doesn't have a point the way the other one does i and waited I even, on taylor swift one time yeah and i would even ask taylor swift what's your point and she would say she would even if you're hard pressed she would probably say my point is to make money i i make things that i think connect to uh women that aren't sure of what their role is going to be in the world and i kind of say these like things that i think connect to them based on my own experiences mm -hmm. And they connect to it, and they like it, and they give me money. And you go, well, that's not a point. And you, that's just general marketing. Mm -hmm. And she goes, yeah, it's kind of it. You know what I mean? Like, um, and and yeah, I think I think great artists have 
points and even great pop stars. Lady Gaga is a great artist. Lady Gaga is an artist. She has a point. She has when you listen to a Lady Gaga album, um, she has a point in everything that she says. It's, it really is. I mean, she really is a Bowie. You know what I mean? That whole uh, bringing a lot of occultism um, into um, into her thought process. A lot of the idea of Amazing. abstractism. Um, born this way. Born this way. You can argue is like the point of 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 Lady Gaga. This idea of life can be whatever you want it to be, and and whatever you can imagine can be real. Yeah. And as long as it's innocuous, as long as it's harmless, baby, you were born this way. And that's a point. That is a point. And I would challenge any Swifty. Tell me, tell me you're born this way as a Swifty. What is it? Is it love song? Is it you just need a guy to give you a fucking ring? Is that it, man? Like, is that it? You know? Um, um, and if it is, then I guess that's a point. You're dependent on, on, on men's approval. That's your point. But what I'm saying is... I just think it's something that resonates with teenage what, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I can think all that's all it is. And I think if you in from Taylor well, Swift, what she I'm, just goes, yeah, that's all it is. What I'm saying is you don't need to convince people they need to have a point. You just have a point. Yes, yeah, yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And you just have to know as an artist, hey, yeah. good good art is is art that yeah. has a point. We waste time talking about that people need to have a point. Well, I think if you or, if you, you want to call like, something you know. art, if you want to call something art, you just go and, and 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 if people go, well, the point is there is no point. It's like whoa, 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 whoa. That maybe was people, that was all, that maybe was. I like don't like a point. Maybe well, people no. like all they want is zero point. So okay, so so <laughs> there's this famous movie that I told you about that I was talking about earlier, yeah. uh, the Holy Mountain by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Um, it's a very famous movie. It was funded by John Lennon, and it's a surrealistic dream. Okay. And it ping pongs all over the place. But when you watch in whole, eventually at the end of the thing, it goes through tarot cards. It goes through astrology. It goes through different types of people and everything like that. And it ping pongs all over the place. Mm. And it's this idea of these people climbing this holy mountain to be like gods, to be immortals. You know what I mean? And I don't want to ruin it for you, but I will. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. Fair enough. In there's the a end- lot of movies. When I stop smoking weed, yeah. there's a lot of movies I won't watch anymore because I, yeah, I just right. can't do it. So there's if this, I was smoking weed, I'd be like, I'd be all over that. But yeah. you know so they I mean? they climb the holy mountain to meet I'm the ruined. nine. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll still like this. They climb the holy mountain to meet the nine immortals. No. Uh, my point is, I don't. Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, go ahead. The immortals. They climb the holy mountain to meet the nine immortals, um, and uh, to figure out how to become immortal. When they get there, they find out that there's no immortals whatsoever. It was a, just a joke being played on them by their teacher, by the shaman. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the teacher. Fuck. <laughs> Somebody's going to die. <laughs> yeah. So the teacher says to them, the lesson is this, is you cannot have immortality. So they're sitting there around this table. The lesson is this, is we don't know if you can have immortality or not. We don't know that. But what you can have is reality. This is what he says. And then he goes, Zoom out. And as soon as you says zoom out, the camera zooms out and you see the entire crew. You see all the parts. You see everything. Right. You know what I mean? So he goes and he goes and he goes and he goes. Um, the whole point is yeah. that that was the point. That yeah. was the point. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. looking at all these chaos, but if you zoom out, yeah. you can see all the moving parts and everything picture. like that, the big yeah. picture. And so that's his point. And what I'm getting at is this movie is just a fever dream. It is it is uh, Michael Silver on steroids. You know what I mean? It is a fever dream. And then in the end, he just simply goes, yeah. you can't. We don't know if you can have immortality, but yeah. what you can have is reality. Yeah. Zoom, Zoom out. Zoom out. Look at the craft service guy. Yeah. And so that's the whole thing yeah. is that like is that like even if your point is chaos, you then have to, in an orderly fashion at the end, state that point. Yeah. And once again, dude, if you literally said to Taylor Swift, what's your point? What's your point? What would you say it was? What would you say it was I just th- judging by it? I don't think there is one. I don't think there I is don't know. one. Uh, my, I don't know. Her yeah. very well. Yeah. I will say I waited on her one time. Okay. She was very nice. I bet. I bet but she's I, the nicest person ever. You had that sort of buddy? I, I, if I had that sort of buddy, I'd be so nice too. But I'll tell you what was crazy about it. Yeah. So she had, because this was a restaurant, we had celebrities coming in. Yeah. And uh, she had se- security, right? Yeah. But she had a uh, more than one security. security. Yeah. yeah. And... It was needed. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, dude, we sat her in this back section. Yeah. Like, where she was kind of out of the way, but there were other tables. Yeah. Dude, people 
left their dinners and rushed over wow. to her table. Wow. Yeah, it was but it was like that's bananas. She's got man. it was like star star power times a, a million. Like yeah. people were just like, you know, like moth to a flame that's shit. Wild dude, that is bananas, wild. man. You can't you can't live a life like that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, but like I said, she's probably this savant that's like, yo, I, I just kind of know the thing. It's like Bo Burnham where he breaks all these songs down. He's like, they just fucking know, dude. They're just these dumb savant people yeah. that just know, you know what I mean? And and that's what Justin Timberlake is. That's what NSYNC is. That's what all these different uh, Taylor Swift and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can kind of tell the difference between high on, art. Are you shitting on JT right now? Justin Timberlake actually ended up becoming a great artist in in in. <sighs> in in the long run, in the long run, um, but I think it took him going solo and actually saying, "Hey, I would like to have a point." And then he started working with. Um, he was in that uh, Richard Kelly movie and stuff like that. I think Whatever. that was where JT's it, the shit, dude. He is now. He is now. But 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 he had a turning point. I saw a sketch with him in SNL the other day, and he kind of was joking around about it was a uh, it was he was Justin Timberlake's ancestor. It was a sketch. It was on the Titanic. Okay. And they're like, uh, they're like, uh, Frank Timberlake, like, what do you think your ancestors are going to do? And he like starts describing Justin Timberlake's yeah, career and yeah, it's like yeah. all just like all the dumb stuff. But then finally, like, like, like he climbs, you know, this kid climbs his way to having a point and everything. And he's yeah. saying this right and this on this on the, in this sketch. Right. So I'm like, OK, I'm like, this is a guy who became self-aware and then decided I have to have a point. Right. And in a weird way, I think Sexy Back kind of was. Remember that song, Sexy Back? <sighs> Bro, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. It was song, but it's like it's like this idea of like this is what you want, right? Like I'm bringing Sexy Back. You know what I mean? It was a bit. It wasn't Baby I Was Born This Way. It wasn't that high of intellect, but it was a bit more poignant. It was a bit more. Um, I, I like have a point. anybody who I, I like anybody who's like, let's make it cool to talk about being sexy. Yeah, and yeah. let's not have it be like taboo you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah. robin thick blurred lines ha huh? remember that remember <laughs> that shit he got shit for that dude it was well, weird. i mean i yeah. don't even know i don't you know i guess the song was a a bit day rapey i have no idea uh i well, have no idea i don't know i don't know that's what all the ladies were saying is like uh because because it was all like i know you want it whatever you know, mm. you know that and stuff and everything so i don't know robin thick it was a good song though the, uh, I think they stole the beat though, so there's a lot of things about that that made it sort of, yeah, a lot of. His dad was Alan Thick though from, uh, yeah, from all growing pains, growing step pains. by step, yeah, and step by step. And he also made the. I think he made all the, like he sung all the theme songs. No way, or wrote did them he? Or something. No shit. No shit. Know, that to... makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Dude. He was crushing it. Oh, Alan dude, that Thicke guy's like was a... crushing it. Dude, when you have two TV series that go over 100 episodes, like that guy's a billionaire. He is a billionaire. Between Growing Pains and Step by Step, oh my god, dude. That is I don't uh... even remember Step by Step. Growing Pains I remember, dude. Yeah, that that's that billionaire. Fuck... That's billionaire money. He we was have. a therapist in his own house. Step by Step was on TGIF. It was that family. It was like the Brady Bunch. It was like a uh... yeah, Kirk Cameron. No, no, that was on Growing. Oh Pants. wait, no, no, Growing Pants. Yeah, yeah. I Step by I Step don't know. was Suzanne Summers was the mom. Oh, remember that? Was shit? thick on that too. He was the dad. He was the dad, and it was like all the. It was like this family where like the mom had like four daughters and the dad had four sons. So it was the Brady Bunch, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah, I remember that one. And I then remember the all, Brady Bunch. I'm yeah, a little older. Yeah, yeah, and they all got together and stuff. And so uh, it was on TGIF. It was you know Boy Meets TGIF, World. TGIF, dude. Yeah, remember that shit? Yeah. Fuck. So yeah, man, that was a. Uh, yeah, man, that was basically uh, our point. <laughs> yeah, that was our point, man. And uh, yeah, man, I feel any great art. It has a point even if the great out there is there is no point i think point. you, you make a great point yeah. i think i think you know you have to I, articulate it i think there's a i don't like i do, i don't like when um like an artist will put something out and i think this is and they'll be like well what is this about and they'll be like well what does it mean to you yeah, yeah, totally. I oh. feel when they treat it like a Rorschach test. It's yeah, like, I don't dude, like. I don't. Shut and up. maybe that's their point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's because just, that's what people are going to do about their art anyway. Maybe that's the way they feel. They have, and I don't know that because I'm not a. You know, they have no intentionality. The word is intentionality. They literally like their cuntiness. art lacks intentionality. Yeah. And anything that you do should have at least a little bit of intentionality to it. Ooh, I like that better than a point. 
Yeah. Intention. Intentionality. Intentionality. Yeah. Or having, what's your intention? What's your intention here? What are you trying to get at? What are you trying to, yeah, exactly. I mean, same thing as having a point, having yeah, intentions. Is. You know what I mean? But I just like it. Oh, it sounds better. Yeah, it's a better word. Having intentionality. You know what I mean? I would say that to a person like Taylor Swift. What is your intention here? What is your I don't know why you're so upset about Swift, dude. I guess just it's the epitome of our modern day culture. It's the epitome yeah. of, of, of just, uh, uh, something that is passed off as art, but isn't truly art in my mind. Yeah, but she's not keeping you from doing anything. No, but like I said on our last podcast, I don't think people throw enough stones. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. People, all people do is throw stones, dude. We are a stone throwing fucking so, organism. Yeah, man. Let's see what time it is. I guess should we end it? Yeah, it's a good time yeah. to end it. Good time to end it. All right. Uh, next week, everyone. Love you all, man. Hope you enjoy this this week. Uh, myself and Michael Thomas Gary. Yeah. Yari.